Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, March 30th, 2015. It's a little past 7.15, and I do call this meeting to order. Um, I would like to remind everyone that ACMI is filming tonight, so please smile widely when at the camera. And um, before we get started, I would just like to thank my colleagues um, for the past year. Um, it's been an honor to serve as chairman, and um, thank you all very much. Um, that being said, I'll turn the meeting over to our board administrator, Marie Capelka, for um, an organizational meeting. The first out of business tonight is to have an organizational meeting for the purpose of electing a chair and vice chair, and I would now like to open it up for nominations. Mrs. Moran. I'd like to nominate Kevin Greeley for chairman. Second. Do I hear a second? Second. I'd like to move. Oh, oh, I'd like to move to close the nominations for chairman. Second. Second. Okay, I need to do a roll call vote. Okay. Dan. Aye. Joe. Aye. 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 Steve. Aye. Dan. Aye. Mr. Bell. Undecided. <laughs> well, this is just to close nominations. Aye. Oh, we're just to close. I'm still undecided. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay, so now we're going to go to Vice Chair. I need a nomination. Mr. Wait, um, can we do both votes in one vote, Doug? We have the, the nomination for Chairman that was open, then there was nomination to close nominations. So the first roll call vote, I think, was the vote to close the nominations. So then we have to vote on the only nomination, which is Mr. Greeley. I think it's probably good. We said aye. Okay. okay, fine. Yeah. As long as yeah. it's done procedurally. So we'll do another one. <laughs> okay. Do, do, we actually, done, did done we got the definition out? This is for chairmanship. Chairmanship, just, just. Oh, aye. aye. Thank you. Aye. 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 Mr. Brown. Aye. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. God help Arlington. Aye. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move on to vice chair. Do I hear it? I move to nominate Diane Mahan. Second. Second. I oh, technically okay, I can't, I guess. And we're going to close? No, you, no, someone else has the second. I don't believe I can as chairman now. Oh, second. Oh. I thought Dan put up his hand, but I could be wrong. Oh. Someone has to yeah. move to close. I move to close nominations. Second. Right, now I'm going to take a roll call vote to close nominations. Mm -hmm. Dan. Aye. Joe. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Mrs. Mahan. Aye. Mr. Greeley. Aye. Now we're going to have the nomination for vice chair, which would be Mrs. Mahan. Anyone opposed? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Uh, aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. So now we change chairs, right? Now you change chairs. Um, I move to close the organization <laughs> meeting. <there. laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Greeley, in, on your election, and now you are in charge of the meeting. Thank you for taking the entire time. I don't really want to get You, you wish. I know. I wish. It's the best seat in the house. It's <laughs> closest to the much, exit. Marie. That's what my dad always says. <laughs> get the seat closest to the exit. Well, we've gone by our allotted time uh, with that, so we're going to have to move the rest of the meeting along. <laughs> so good evening, everybody. First of all, I do want to welcome back our two colleagues who were uh, re-elected on Saturday, Mr. Byrne and Mr. Curo, and it was, we believe, the lowest turnout in history in an Arlington election. And, but what I'd like to do is thank the 2,697 people, most, uh, many of whom I'm staring at in this audience tonight, <laughs> who did brave the weather and did get out there and voted. Uh, it's very important. Of 29,000 registered voters, uh, as I say, 2,700 get out and voted, so the turnout was 9.11%. Uh, second, I would like to thank both uh, Mr. Curo as vice chairman and, and also Stephen Byrne as chairman for the excellent job which both of them did uh, last year. Uh, Stephen is the youngest person ever elected to the Arlington Board of Selectmen, but I heard the comment much more than uh, once about how he has conducted himself well beyond his years. So Stephen, job very well done. Thank you. Thank you. 
But more importantly, tonight, for the first time in nine months, we have the return of the mayor of the town of Arlington, uh, the woman who runs the office on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Please, everybody, welcome back Marie Kropelka, if you will. Yay. She's been working right along, but uh, we, she hasn't been able to cover these night meetings, and we're certainly glad to have her back. So, as Stephen mentioned, this is a meeting of the Board of Selectmen for March 30th. Uh, the first item up is for approval of the Farmer's Market for 2015. Please welcome Patsy Kramer. Thank you very, thank you very much. Isn't it nice in this cold spring to think about a farmer's market in June with fresh-grown strawberries and fresh peas? And uh, we're uh, asking for permission to hold the farmer's market in the Russell Carmen parking lot. This is our 18th year. It is a very successful market. Uh, Arlington people really support the market. Uh, we'll have 25 vendors, uh, pretty much the same vendors that we've had, uh, two wine vendors. And I would also uh, like to continue the parking pass program that we started two years ago, which has been very successful, and many people that come to the market are very grateful that we have it available. So, uh, Patsy, it's Wednesday afternoons when? from Wednesday starting June 10th, 2 to 6.30, and we go through October 28th, I want to say, the last Wednesday in, Oct in October. And you continue to whatever food is left over to make it available. We do, to yes. Arlington we have what we families. call the seconds market, which is donated by some of the farmers, and we take it to Monotomy Manor, and it, it is distributed there for a dollar a bag. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Comments on the board? Uh, yeah. Move approval. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. second. Comments on the board? Yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I'm delighted to support it again. I, one thing I am looking forward to is that we're going to be getting new meters sooner than uh, hopefully later in there. New what? Then? Meters, parking meters. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And when that happens, I'm going to hope that we can evaluate whether or not we still need the parking pass. But for now, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Kiro, did you do something? No. Oh, anybody else? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank, Thank you very you much. Very much. Thank Thanks, you. Patsy. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right. Uh, also, now this is for our consent agenda. First is the appointment of new election workers: Catherine Caruso for Precinct 11, Roseanne Cazaza for Precinct 3, Catherine Gillis for Precinct 14, Rita Head for Precinct 14, Julianne Kelly Dory for Precinct 6, and Mary Stretton for Precinct 10. Next, we have a request for a one-day all-alcohol license May 16th, uh, 2015 at Fidelity House for their annual fundraiser. And uh, third for consent is approval, the third annual bladder cancer awareness walk on Saturday, May 9th, 2015. Is anybody here in the audience who would wish to speak on any of those three consent agenda items? Please, come forward. Well, you don't have to take the gum out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, you've granted uh, the okay for our two previous walks, and um, we'd love to do this walk again on Saturday, my, May 9th, as you said, in, in honor of our mother's memory, Kathy Magram. And um, it's usually a beautiful day, hopefully, sunny, and we raised, uh, I think, $7,000 last year. We expect about 30, 30 or so people. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, your name? Lin I'm Linda Magram, and my sister Tracy Magram were both Rats, Arlington sorry, residents. We and start at Tracy's house on 26 Fraser Road and walk down Mass Ave to here, and then we walk back. And if people wanted more information, how would they contact you? Um, they can contact my email, linda.magram, M-A-G-R-A-M, at hmhco.com, and there's also the bcan.org website and the walk is listed as the Arlington, Massachusetts walk on the website. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on any of those items that I listed? Okay, motion from the board. Move approval. Move, move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, next we have appointments to the Disabilities Commission, uh, Beverly Bevilacqua and Susan Savage Tennant. Beverly, Suzanne, is it Susan? Susan, please come to the mic so we can embarrass you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. 
Your name, please, is? I'm Susan Savage Tennant. Susan, welcome. Thanks. Would you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? I am. I, uh, I grew up here in Arlington, and I moved to California 33 years ago. Wow. I thought I was going for six months, <laughs> but I've worked in the field of developmental disabilities. <coughs> it's kind of my avocation, and I've done that my whole life, and I've returned back to Arlington, um, back to my family home, as a matter of fact, and I'll be staying here for the rest of my, my time, and I would like to contribute. I think I, I'm very interested. I love Arlington. I like to see all the changes that have gone on, and I think if I can have something to offer, I'd like to get involved. Well, in California, were any of the uh, local boards uh, as strong or as attractive as this board that you no, stand in front it, of today? it's striking, you know, that jumps right out at me. <laughs> Obviously a qualified candidate here, yeah, Ms. Mahan. First, I'd like to move approval. Um, second. And, and secondly, yep. secondly, you highlighted an awful lot of life experiences, but I just wanted to pick one that's sort of my near and dear to my heart is your day vocational center. Oh, yes. Um, I think here in Arlington, especially for when young kids hit 21 um, that don't go residential, that's an area that really, um, I, I can kind of attest to the fact that definitely some more um, work on providing some of those, or if they're out there, getting the information out. So I'm thrilled to see, you, you list vast experience, but this is the first time I've really seen that highlighted in the first paragraph, so I appreciate you doing that. Oh good, that's what I love, I'm lucky. I'm lucky I've, and I've, I'm lucky I have a place to do it. I, I hope I can be of some help. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any, any other questions from the board or anything? Okay. Is there a motion? Oh, you moved approval mm -hmm. and seconded. Okay, thank you. And is Beverly here? I think she is. She is here. Oh, excuse me, Beverly. <laughs> Beverly Bevilacqua, welcome. Thank you. Same thing, can you tell us a little bit about your, yourself, Beverly? Well, I am a retired nurse, and I worked with uh, disabled clients, both phys physically and mentally, at the uh, Fernal School for the Developmental Disabilities for 15 years. I've been a resident of Arlington for 62, uh, 52 years. Um, I also volunteer at the Arlington Senior Association. I've been there since 1997 with, um, I make coffee, tea or whatever, greet people, do hostessing, help with the different programs that we have. Um, oh, what else can I say about myself? Well, that is plenty. Mm -hmm. uh, that is from the board. Yeah, Mr. Dunn. I just want to move approval and I want to thank you for all the volunteer work that you're doing already and thank you for being on this commission. Okay. Uh, I know I, I definitely rely a lot on the reports from the commission about some of the uh, decisions we have to make, in particular things like the um, the CDBG funding and things like that. So right. I definitely, the, it's a valuable board, and I really appreciate the work it does. Okay, thank you. Is that, am I on it, or is that? We have to take a uh, vote, but it's looking good. It's well, touching just <laughs> about there. <laughs> I like your chances, though. Okay, you, did, you moved to right, Mr. I will Dunn, second seconded it. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. You're almost there. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Now, Beverly, it's official. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Excellent. You. And thank uh, Beverly and Susan for being here. When people, you know, Arlington has over a hundred boards and commissions. And when they are, when uh, people are first appointed, we ask them to come here uh, and thank them for doing so. so no, you, you, well, it, the meeting gets really good from here, Beverly. I don't know. <laughs> but you are all set, ma'am. Thank set. you very much for being here. Okay, well. Okay. Hang okay. with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so, right, we took, yeah, we took the vote on both of those. Okay, so uh, I believe we're still waiting for Kathy. Right, Bill? Okay. So, uh, next on the agenda, licenses and permits. And uh, we are going to hold a hearing for three different restaurants <coughs> in Arlington. To explain what's going on here, I'm going to turn this over to our town council, Doug Heim. Thank you, Chairman Greeley. Thank you, members of the board. As you were notified by my memo uh, dated March 26th 
of this year, the Arlington Police Department conducted alcohol compliance checks on 15 licensed Arlington restaurants on or about January 22nd, 2015. These compliance checks are conducted routinely by the police department, and in this instance, the department's operation found three established establishments served underage persons. Um, Officer Porcello of the Arlington Police Department is present here to provide you with some further details on the findings and the compliance operation as this board requires or is interested in, um, as are the license holders for the restaurants alleged to have served underage persons. But for the purposes of efficiency, I think the first thing we can do is summarize the process, hear from Officer Porcello, and then hear from each one of the uh, license holders. Uh, I want to remind the board that per your policy, as revised on January 12th of this year, uh, a violation such as the alleged violations in this case uh, of your policy, the ABCC's regulations, or the general laws, including Chapter 138, are punishable by a three to five day suspension of alcohol license for a first offense. It's my understanding that each one of these violations is a first offense in this case. Um, the board also has a number of factors which it can consider uh, in making its determination as to how long a suspension should be if the board in fact finds that a suspension and a, a violation and that a suspension is merited. These criteria include uh, the licensee's policies and procedures and applications of those policies and procedures to guard against service to underage individuals, the severity and type of the offense, the efforts made to identify the purchasers of alcohol at the establishments, the appearance of the underage purchaser or purchasers of alcohol, the quality of the evidence of a violation, the circumstances of the case, and the number and nature of the licensee's previous violations, which in this instance, as I previously told you, were zero. Um, but with that uh, said, I'm going to turn this over to Officer Porcello, who can describe to you the basic operation and their findings. While the written report is, I think, very, very good and gives you the information you need to know, I think it's also important to have the opportunity to have the police department uh, answer any questions and present you a summary. Uh, good evening. Um, so on January 22nd, we conducted one of these things and what these things entails. Uh, it's two detectives. We go out and we have two volunteer undercover operatives, uh, generally from out of town. And we try to hit all the establishments in one night. And when I say establishments, I mean places in town that have been given licenses to serve or sell alcohol. Um, we supply the operatives with money to go into these establishments. We instruct them to attempt to get receipts, attempt to get the best description of the person who serves them the alcohol. If they are served alcohol, they do pay, ask for a receipt, and leave, and leave the alcohol on the table. They come out, they tell us their findings, and we go on to the next place. Um, what I failed to mention is before we even go out, what we do is we take pictures of the two people. We take their, any forms of ID that they have, all their money, we lock it up. We make them sign uh, consent forms to be with us, and they have to sign guideline forms so they know what this thing entails. And that's basically it. And on the 22nd of January, we had three uh, businesses fail. It was uh, Punjab, Fusion Taste, and Mr. Sushi. Questions from the board? Yes, Ms. Mahan. I just have, just coming from court myself as working, I just look at the three cases and I just see one thing being different from the three establishments. I anticipate the answer may be no, but I just wanted to ask you the fact that of the three that failed, but one did not give a receipt, is there any in import that you put on that or that's just something? No, no, we, so our operators are under 21, they're not always that mature and they don't really think if they get nervous they might just leave. Okay. Um, and there might be other people in the restaurant sitting nearby and we don't want to let the other people know right. what's going on. That's I just look at all things being equal, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Dunn. Um, so having, I know you do this every year, and sometimes more often, I've, I've sure. read your memos at this point, you know, several times. Is there anything significantly different about the process this time than past times, or is it? No. Okay, thank you. And I read it too, but I forget, how many did you hit that night in total? I believe we hit 15 total. 15, and then three were found, okay. And this was the first of um, two nights. So we did another round of stings at a different date. And, and no incidences on that different date, I assume? We did have some failures, uh, failures on that All day All right, as we're well. just dealing with this one night. I'm sorry at this point, excuse me, okay. So, 
then my next step, uh, town council, is call up each restaurant one at a time. Yeah, and Mr. Greeley, if you, if you uh, would allow me, I just want to clarify one thing. These, uh, each one of these um, operations are done with cash, correct? Cash, yes. Okay, yes, thank you. So yeah, if, if at this point in time the uh, license holders would like to present um, their case, well, we can call them in order. Okay. I just want to know what day of the week was this? Thursday. 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 Okay. Um, you know, and I'm sure these restaurants feel bad, and but we're very strict on this. You know, any alcohol consumption is to be done uh, legally and responsibly in the town of Arlington. So this is just the order they are on the agenda. <coughs> so the first restaurant we're going to call up is under Hope Color Inc. doing business as Mr. Sushi. Uh, Daniel Ahn is the manager. Good evening. <coughs> Uh, I'm Daniel Ahn, uh, the manager of the uh, Mr. Sushi restaurant. Um, first of all, um, I'm uh, gratefully uh, sorry about this matter. Um, uh, Mr. Sushi um, restaurant opened in uh, 2001. Uh, since uh, we opened, we have not had any troubles, uh, including like uh, this the alcohol issue things. And then un unfortunately, this incident happened on January. Uh, uh, again, I, I'm, I am gratefully sorry about that. And then I'm not uh, fluent in English, so let me introduce my um, Mrs. Gina Choi. Uh, Mrs. Sushi is a family-owned business, and uh, uh, she is a sister-in-law, and she was in the restaurant that day as a manager. So. Hi, my name is Gina Choi, and you know, as he already explained, Mr. Sushi is a family-owned business, and also I was at the site, and uh, Danielle Ahn was in the other restaurant, and also uh, Julie Ahn, she's the uh, owner also and wife of Danielle. She was in the kitchen busy, you know, doing the catering and stuff. I was at the, uh, the register, and I was on the phone too. And also that day, uh, we had a new trainee, and then we were really, really busy, and he wanted to help. So I think he um, sit the guests, the two people, and then I remember as soon as he sit them on the table, they asked them to order, and then of, obviously he didn't know any procedure. I mean, we've been training, but he was also, you know, really didn't have any idea what to do. So he was asking his mentor, uh, there's another training guy, and then he helped him to serve the um, the beer. And um, right after that, this thing happened really fast. Within 15 minutes, as soon as he served the um, beer, I think they left. So this new trainee was really, um, I mean, he was really surprised. Maybe he was, you know, not doing a good job. That's why they he left. So we were just, you know, like training him. Did you ask him? Ask him about the um, ID and stuff like that. But, you know, he said, okay, I understand. I'm gonna do that again for the um, the procedure from the next time. But, you know, they already left. So we know what happened. After that, we really, you know, made sure what to do with those kind of, like, procedure. And then you know. So, so what did you change after this? Oh, yeah, we've been like gather all the um, workers all together. So then before the shift starts, we always make sure you have to do the training. I mean, to check the ID, no matter what, how they, you know, look like. Some people, we have a lot of like local guests, regular guests. Even though you know their faces, you know them all, but you still need to check the ID and the legal age is 21. Even though they ask you to serve the, um, any kind of drink right away, please follow the steps. Sit the guest and then present the menu. If they order the alcohol, please check. You have to do it, no matter what. That's what we've been doing. Colleagues, yeah, Mr. Byrne. <clears throat> um, first, so did you say that the new trainee um, has left the restaurant. He's no longer employed there. Is that what you implied? Uh, he's there. He's still he's employed. He's there. Yeah. He wanted to help. I mean, his mentor was busy, okay. so he wanted to help. So he's the guest. And, but um, yeah, he's doing working. Okay. And thank you. 
And my second question is, you know, you said he was in training um, and he was a new trainee. What, what did that entail? So before this incident occurred, what was the training like? Oh, he was basically shadowing. He was so shadowing? Is yeah, shadowing, point? yeah. All, he actually, we just asked him to do the, um, you know, do the, like, a, as a bus boy, just mm -hmm. clean the table or maybe, like, a, prepare the drinks. That's all. But at that time, <laughs> without seconds, he just wanted to help. Yeah, so no, I, I, can, I can certainly understand, you know, yeah. a new employee wanting to, um, you know, take on more role, uh, you know, greater responsibility. Yes. But I do think that, you know, maybe perhaps, you know, a training system that's more formal, a training system that is, you know, far, is far more in detail than just, yes. you know, following around uh, another yes. waiter is uh, probably appropriate. I actually, I had to, you know, like uh, tell him, but I was on the phone also mm. doing the um, takeout. So I was like, oh my God, he was so fast. Mm. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Kiro. Uh, yeah, to Mr. Buren's point, is any of your training material in writing for the for the new employees? Do you do you issue guidelines in writing to remind them? Uh, we write, you know, like uh, mostly the regulations and then steps. Importantly, uh, we write it and then we post it on the wall. Yeah. Uh, at the uh, with the the waiter's site. Yeah. Yeah, and also we always, you know, like uh, in we are always in the site. Yeah. Every step they go, but the timing was, of yeah. course, like some missed step, but that's what we're doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Mahan. <clears throat> Just because my family's in the restaurant business also. Yes. Like, first to protect serving, not serving underage children. Attempted purchases at alcohol, but also for your benefit. Um, I think what I would be more comfortable in hearing is a more solid structure um, this is not a requirement, but I'm kind of hearing sort of teeter tottering. I think what would I would put before you is when someone new comes on, they're either a bus boy, yes. bus person, or if they are shadowing someone, you have to have a rule. And my family owns restaurants that you know seat anywhere two to five hundred, not in Arlington, yes. um, and you can't not break that rule. And what has worked best for them is when that mentor feels that that trainee is appropriate to go on the floor by him or herself. I think it would benefit you, and I think it would benefit the board that if you just came up with something that you picked your five criteria or your three criteria or your nine, that does the employee dress appropriately? Get that? But one of the questions would be, do you feel that this employee is properly trained? in the serving of alcoholic beverages. So that, and I, I understand that everything gets busy and all that, but for liability's sake all the way around, um, I'd be more comfortable, you know, I, I'm kind of wanting to hear something like that because I, I'm not being sarcastic or anything, but can't really accept, certainly not again, oh, I was busy, I was on the phone, he had a mentor, he was shadowing, he was a busboy. I think you need more structure. Sure. Is anybody in the restaurant tips trained, TIPS trained? Yes. Yes, okay. Is there something else? Okay. Any other questions on the board? I just want to clarify, if I may, with um, Officer Portello that it's routine that they once serve, they're not to drink it, obviously, and get up and leave. They mentioned they left within about 15 minutes, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Did you want to mention something? No, no. Okay. okay. So, how does board, yeah, Mr. Kiro. Uh, I, I move that we uh, impose a suspension of three days from Mr. Sushi for the violation. Uh, we, I guess we typically choose the day. What, usually the, the well, it's the same day of the week. Of the week. Right, uh, so it would be a Thursday, Friday, give a little bit of, uh, Saturday night suspension of their alcohol license. They can continue to serve other. I, I would say commencing on the, the, um, the first Thursday in May. Mr. Uh, Kiro, if I may? Yes. Yeah. So the process will be the board would uh, make a determination. Um, I would, and I don't think this would be a problem with your timeline, but I just want to make sure to clarify for the board that you'd make a determination, give me some time to write an opinion, vote to make sure that opinion is consistent with your comments and the things that you've said, and then it would take place at any time after that. Um, so it could be earlier than May if you, if you want. It could be, okay. So just simply, if I leave it just at the three days, that's sufficient. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Commencing a Thursday night. 
Second. Second. Right. Yeah. Second discussion. And do I take any public input on a hearing such as this, Mr. Hine? Uh, Mr. Greeley, you may uh, take public input if you want, but you're not required to for the purposes of this type of license here. Okay. This, no? Okay. All right. So the motion is to suspend the alcohol license for three days, which would be a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the date of which will be communicated later. Is that what we're saying, Mr. Hine? Yes. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Other questions? Yep. You're all safe. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Um, Mr. Chair, can I just make one point? Um, that, that three night, that, that is a min minimum. And uh, if, if this does happen again, it just should be said that, you know, with that you will not experience a three night, you know, suspension again, or at least I would not support a three night suspension again. So I think I, I just wanted to make that clear. Well, I believe the, it's up to two weeks for the second mm. and then uh, revoking of the license for the third. Mm. So, and as <laughs> was mentioned, none of these uh, three restaurants that we're hearing tonight have any previous mm -hmm. uh, issues related to it. Okay, next is the, it must be tingling with excitement, the uh, Karma Veer Corporation doing business as Punjab Fine Indian Cuisine, uh, Jasper Pabla, the manager. Represented by council. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, good evening. John Leone representing Karen Beer Corporation doing business with um, Punjab Restaurant. I'm here with Corinda Pabla and Jasval Pabla is here as well. They're the owners and managers of the restaurant. Um, first of all, they wish to apologize for the um, violation that occurred on the 27th. It was their first violation in 16 years of operation. Um, that's not an excuse. They just wanted to make that clear. What I've given to each of you tonight is a, um, it, I've helped with, the, I've worked with them over the past week and a half or so and codified a comprehensive alcohol policy that spells out exactly to their employees what and how they are to um, card and deal with all their clients and customers under the age of 35 years old. Um, I've also got for you a Notice of disqualification. I only have one copy of these, so I'll give them to Mr. Heim Hack, and he can spread them around. A, they have spoken with the one server, um, uh, Ms. Seema, whose last name I have trouble with. Thapa. 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 Seema Thapa. I read all through your stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like, pronunciation sometimes gets me. Um, she was the um, hostess and she was training to be a backup bartender. This was her first evening, and she didn't get fully versed into the rules, and she served the two um, underage folks who came in. She has been disciplined. She's been giving a warning that if it happens again, she'll be terminated. Um, following the incident two weeks ago, they started a, they have a weekly agenda for a, a meeting with their employees every Friday. The first item two weeks ago was um, uh, thank you. alcohol check and compliance regulations. And the second thing, the first one, this week's meeting was to fully review the alcohol policy, which in front of you, and we have a fully signed version of the alcohol policy by every employee in the restaurant. Um, they are TIP certified. SEMA has taken the TIPS course, as well as the bartender and Garinda has been TIP certified for since November of 2013 and probably prior to that as well. Um, so again, they are extremely sorry that this happened, they, that that's still not an excuse and they promise it will not happen again. Uh, we gladly entertain any questions. Yes. Oh yeah, they also have behind the counters um, a alcohol books, every driver's license in the state and numerous foreign countries as well. And I've provided with them a um, copy of this, which gave you the first page. It was 41 pages. I didn't want to print it out and put it in your books. But uh, 
law enforcement guide to illegal IDs and how to spot them. So they're very taking this very seriously and you'll see in the back there's also things that they are posting next to the register a stoplight that says if it's this day before certain such and such a year. They had things of this nature before but they're going to make sure everybody sees them and in multiple places throughout the restaurant where the service can access their point of sale systems and alcohol. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I thank you. I'm, I really am impressed with the with the work and the, the, the to keep it from happening again. Uh, the only, one thing I just wanted to make sure is that the, does the training happen for new hires as well? Yes. Okay. So, so for, we have so a whole package. This is Gurinder Pabla, yeah. and um, we just like change. I just changed the whole training uh, thing with uh, with my application. They have to read the whole liquor license before even they go on the floor. And uh, we're going to like you know have them tip train before even like to all the servers. Okay. So like I just did finished with two two of my employees, and I will want to do it with all my servers. Okay. Everyone is working on the floor. I'm really glad to hear that because I really think that that kind I'm of really sorry about yeah. what had happened. Yeah. yeah. That kind of commitment to keeping to train new people, mm -hmm. I think, is the absolute key to keeping it from happening again. So I'm really glad to hear you say that. Sorry. Yes, Ms. Mahan. <clears throat> Um, first, I want to say this is the kind of response when you, we get to this unfortunate place that I do like to see. Um, even though it's your first in 16 years, it doesn't really minimize it um, any less. But your response to this, where you have codified policies, I really appreciate the fact that you came up with a disciplinary action notice where you notified the employee and you have three steps, first, second, and final written warning. If I may, I'm not going to go alcohol into- Alcohol violations. So Final warning. Oh, okay, I'm but I'm saying yeah. this is the detail that you right. went, that how serious that you took this. Yeah, they get one warning on that. Right. And, out the door. and that's, and, um, but what I'm saying is the only, and I appreciate the fact that I, I think I saw in everything that went by that we just got tonight that at your March 20th, 2015 staff meeting, the first two or three items on your agenda dealt with going over this policy again. And the only thing that I didn't see in your minutes, not to say it wasn't discussed, and I didn't see it in your alcohol service policy, but I did see it in your disciplinary action letter. Um, you had everything else, do not serve under 21, what IDs are acceptable, but what you had in the disciplinary action is um, your policy to card anyone under the age of 35. Now, that, that may also be in this policy somewhere, and I, because I just got it, I yeah. didn't see it. it it's in there. Because I think that it is in there, because yeah. I think that's a good rule. Okay, I'm sorry. I tried no to problem. read it real no. fast. I tried to get them to you before um, that's electronic okay. things went out last week, but I just didn't have a chance. Thank you. Other questions, members of the board? Um, I'm, I'm, I think I know the answer to this, but on that, the notice of disciplinary action, it says fusion tastes policy is to card anyone, right? Oh, that's that's a typo. Okay, Good, because because certainly Punjab is at the top. I I, I wasn't sure if they were owned by the same. No, no, no. Uh, that, that's a typo. That's my mistake. Okay, no problems. Uh, so pleasure of the board or displeasure, Mr. Uh, Dunn. I move that we suspend their alcohol license for three days, start to start on a Thursday, date to be determined by the final uh, vote. Second. Is there a second? Yep. Further discussion? Yep. Just briefly. Yeah. Mr. Greeley, briefly. Yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, just to, with the comment that the same that Mr. Byrne made earlier, it's the minimum required by our policy, and uh, we really we hope that this is the only time we ever have to deal with this with your company, and we, we, but the, we do think it is the appropriate thing. Even with the changes going forward, it's our policy, to, and we, we think it's a, a smart one. Okay, so all those, uh, was there was moved and seconded? Yes. Was it, okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Um, again, thank you, sorry. It is a policy. We've done it on every restaurant uh, at least the three days, but you are exemplary in terms of how you've handled it since, and I'm sure we won't see you again. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we won't. They just had be, wish, wished me to ask one question if the three days had to commence on the day of the violation or if it could end on the day of the violation. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as opposed to Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday. Mr. Heim, can I ask you that question? So uh, I know the 
our written policy states it starts on the day of the, right? So yeah, Mr. Greeley, my understanding is first that that's Mr. Dunn's motion, that that's an uh, absent an amendment to that, um, to that motion and the vote that you just took, that that's when it would commence. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, that is consistent with the board's policy as revised as of this January, that um, penalties for violations are to commence on the same day that the violation occurred. I believe there's been a fairly extensive discussion among the board about that. Um, whether the board wishes to deviate from that policy, I think the board has the ability to do that, but it is your policy. Okay. Anybody? I'd like to stay with the motion. No. Okay. Okay. Well, worth worth an ask. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you. Thank you. I'll watch out behind you. We vote. We vote. Yep. All the, right, I believe we, all those in favor, we said aye. Yep. Yes. Yep. Then that that, uh, that discussion came up after that. Okay, the third restaurant we're going to bring forward is uh, Y Plus Y Incorporated doing business as Fusion Taste, Jason Jen, Zen Yi Manager. And again, I'm pretty sure going to be represented by counsel. Yes, your, yes, sir. Oh, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like that, John, actually. Don't put anything in his head, John. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And John Leone representing Y Plus Y, Inc., um, doing business at Fusion Case. I'm with Jason Sen and Michael Chen, the, the restaurant manager. Jason's the owner and the alcohol manager and the actually the overall manager. Um, I've just handed to you their alcohol policy, which again, over the past two, three weeks, I've helped them develop. Um, that's why you did see that typo. Um, and that Sorry, one thing, I thought I caught them all. Um, but they, again, they've been in business um, for nine years with a malt and liquor license, 2006 and 2008, Jason and I came in he got an all alcohol license and it's been seven years since that point. Um, again, in that time they have had no violations. Um, they were, I'm not sure what happened this time. Um, May is one of their regular servers. Her name, as you'll see, is a, uh, well, we, they call her May, it's Xu Ming Quen. Xu yeah. Ming Quen. So Xu Ming um, has received that disciplinary notice that you'll see in there. She has signed off on it. She understands the severity of it. Um, they also had um, a training program, maybe not um, fully extensive, but now they're going to be revising it. Have you gone over the alcohol policy with all the employees? Yes. Okay, they've gone over that alcohol policy with all the employees. I do not have a signed off copy as the previous um, restaurant brought in, but they do and are intending to enforce that again with all the employees on a standardized basis. Um, they have a little smaller operation so it will be easier for them to monitor. They have taken, as you see in the back of the package, they have additional signage around the restaurant at point of sale and alcohol on the bar for, you know, in bluntly, you're on 21, you're not gonna get alcohol, but also the stop sign and the um, other indices. They have the Melty State Manual, uh, they will be buying that alcohol driver's license regulation manual within the next day or so. So that will have that. They are, four of them, three of them are TIP certified. I gave you the TIPs mm -hmm. and the others will be TIP certified shortly. He can only do so many per day. Yeah, I gave him those copies. Yeah. So uh, with that, they do apologize that this happened and I'm sure it won't happen again. But it's an unfortunate incident. Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Grayley. Um, thank you again for your presentation. Um, I was wondering what in this alcohol uh, policy is different than the policy that was in place before? Well, it's relatively very similar. Um, once you get a good policy, it's a good policy. No, I agree with that, but what was the policy out, before? It's going to be actually, frankly, uh, the names. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't deteriorate or de degenerate from the, the product. It spells out 35 years of age or under, they're gonna get carded. It spells out what is acceptable forms of ID. It spells out how 
They determine if it's acceptable ID. It determines how they are to handle employee, handle customers when they start to get intoxicated, if they get belligerent. It spells out Arlington's rules and regulations that if they have more than two drinks, they must be served food or they don't get further service mm -hmm. of, on and, alcohol. And these policies were in place before this have, incident? No, I say I've been working with them, okay. as well as the former, over the past few three weeks, developing these policies and getting them in place. They had less standardized policy, as most restaurants do, until so um, this occurs. They, so they now are going to bring it up the code and bring it up the snuff and okay. get it um, in writing so the employees know it, the employees will see it, and they will have to maintain it. And again, one, they have one on the disciplinary. It's a final warning. You get one warning and you're out. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Schumacher was given a one-week um, suspension for her um, serving the underage kids. Thank you, John. Yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, <clears throat> just trying to stay in the same um, protocol. Um, on the last previous um, yes. violation that we had, you had the disciplinary action, and you also submitted to us the signed copy with the employees. I have and a, acknowledged. I, I was just I have curious right if they here, also took that But step. she actually signed the wrong piece of paper. That's all right. No, I, I was just wondering if they also were doing that step. Yes, they do. I have it, but she signed the back of the alcohol policy as opposed to the actual disciplinary letter, so I, I can get that disciplinary letter to Ms. Kapelka tomorrow if you wish. It's, it's not required. I no. just want to make sure that I think it's really spelled out here specific to the incident as right. well as highlighting, you know, it encapsulates all, all of your policy. So sometimes you sign the p different piece of paper. It doesn't contain the same information. I just want to make sure no, that she, these two gentlemen are confident yeah, that she's aware of what Michael did go over with her in detail, but when he had her sign, she signed the back of the um, the policy itself instead of the disciplinary letter. Mm -hmm. okay. so that's why I wasn't able to provide you with that actual letter. And then just two more questions. Um, and I don't know if I can ask this. Can I ask if they have a POS, a point of the sales system, if they um, use that in their business? Yeah, they, I they, I they do. Yes. I was just wondering if you they have, have a, computer, a, right? a POS computer. system. Yeah, they have a point of sale system. Okay, and again, just because my family's in the restaurant business, this has nothing to do with anything, but. Um, I'm not saying this was the case, but I know in the restaurant business, it's really stressed that everybody uses that POS system so a receipt gets issued. Mm -hmm. So I, if I was involved in this restaurant business and I saw something like that, I would really sort of track my sales, especially on alcohol, and you can do that. You can look at you know, how much alcohol sold. I don't know if you do it by, you measure you know, whether it's kegs, bottles sold, and you measure your waste, you know, if your bartender makes the wrong kind of drink, but you're just beer and wine, so you shouldn't. But I would just tell you, one of the other things I would stress with your employees is to really, any sale they have, they have to use the POS system. And maybe they did, and, but, but I do know that every time we've done, and correct me if I'm wrong, we've done the alcohol stings, I'm gonna call them, they're given the same instructions, and when they do get receipts, they leave with them. So I just wanted to highlight that for you all. Every, every time they go, yeah, customer every time customer customer customer. Customer. we pin and we see for the customer. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Dunn. Uh, can, you can you tell me what the process is going to be for training new hires? So when you when you hire a new employee, I'm wondering what the training process is going to be. Now we start the basic part as you when you uh, I, I need to ask you to step okay. to the microphone. Stand right up here. Yeah. Now we start a new policy here. When the old uh, employee coming, we give the training for one way about uh, this new policy, how they how to sell with the alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we have to decide, put in a uh, service in a bar, so do not serve alcohol under 21. They always when customer coming, they always see the sign and the new new survey coming when they type in the new POS or computer. We sign this to that. They will see that before they serve alcohol. Okay. I will say that uh, every time we have a restaurant who comes before us who's had a violation, yeah. it almost always stems back to a training that didn't work. Yeah. And so I really encourage you to make sure that, that training is good and consistent yeah, for yeah, all of your new employees, because yeah. that's really the best way to keep this from happening again. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Carroll. I, I move that we um, suspend the uh, license for fusion taste for uh, three days commencing on uh, Thursday at a date to be determined uh, following the uh, preparation of uh, comments by, by uh, 
town council. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, thank you very much, and sorry, thank but you'll be board. notified. Yeah. yeah. John. I'm sure you won't happen again. Yeah, good well, job on this policy. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Good catch, Mr. Grayley. Well, I, I, I'm sorry I pointed it out. I just wasn't sure whether they were both owned right. by the same. That's, no, that's it, all. It was, it was, yeah. But a lot of others should see this, John. A lot of other restaurants should, should see this. Mr. Chair, could I? Yes, uh, sir. Yes. Before Mr. we close out the, this whole agenda item, before Inspector leaves, um, could I just say, make one note? Um, yep. I think we all know that, that, that the, the people in Ireland can really support the, the alcohol licenses and the restaurants. They, they showed it on, on Saturday. Um, but uh, we do take this seriously. And, and this type of uh, under, underage operative uh, operation we, we were kind of wondering about its future because the funding comes through um, the Arlington Youth Health and Safety Coalition. They had lost their grant funding. They have gotten it back. So um, um, it's a very important part of this. And I, I want to thank Inspector Porcello. He's a, an active participant at the coalition meetings as well as his work in the Arlington uh, Public Schools. And it's been very helpful to have that link um, to, to help explain um, the, the way that these these operations work to the, the broader community that's concerned with um, with uh, underage alcohol abuse, so I just want to note it's, it's it's we we these were at risk and it's good to have these back. It's an important tool to the board, I think. See you then. Thank you, Inspector Porcello. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, take one uh, piece of business out of order, and then we'll do Citizens Open Forum. We are honored to have our superintendent of schools here, along with a couple of school committee members. So I assume, uh, Superintendent Bodie, are you speaking on this, which is a vote to approve the submission of a statement of interest to MSBA Arlington High School. Oh, Adam, you're starting this, excuse me. Adam Chapterline. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. J just for a brief introduction, and um, then we can hear from the superintendent. Uh, this would really be a resubmission <coughs> or uh, a second try on behalf of the town to get the MSBA to approve moving forward with a high school renovation rebuild project. Uh, last year, the board heard <coughs> a pretty in-depth uh, presentation from HMFH Architects in regards to some of the things that could be done with the school and some of the needs of the school, as well as a discussion from the superintendent and members of the school department. So uh, we were not successful in being uh, chosen by the MSBA last year, uh, but uh, want to once again rally the community around um, submitting, again, a statement of interest to the MSBA. So with that, if the board is so uh, inclined to hear from Superintendent Bowie. Good evening. Thank you for having us here this evening. Um, we are here th this evening to ask for your uh, support for the submission of the statement of interest on the high school. It, it needs to be submitted by April 10th. The school committee voted its approval last Thursday. Um, as we have looked at this um, statement of interest, we really went over it with a fine tooth comb again this year looking at each one of the categories to see if there was an, something else that we would potentially qualify for. And after much discussion, um, we are staying with the same priorities. We really do not qualify for priority one, which is when a school is really uninhabitable uh, and has severe safety <coughs> issues. But we did relook at um, our priority f five in particular and looked at the things that we should perhaps reprioritize, um, emphasize, and did. Uh, a couple of changes that we have is the enrollment update, which is um, what we had last year, but we obviously had to update it this year. We also looked at um, a couple of things that have happened this winter that um, we need to emphasize to the MSBA, and that is really the permeability of the mortar um, at, of the high school. We have saw this year after this, this winter and, and some of the melting, we've seen buckets of water in the hallways. And this speaks to some leakage porousness of the, of the, um, the <coughs> facade of the building. Not facade, but the, just the whole structure of the building. So this might be something that might need additional um, um, 
an additional study as we go forward. But we did mention it with a little bit more uh, specificity in this, and we also emphasized the security of the building. Um, we have, as you know, 52 doors and different egresses that just to be able to alarm them or put cameras on them would be a very, very expensive uh, process and something that we certainly would like to see happen, but the cost is, is quite significant. Um, and if we're going to be able to do a renovation of the building, this is something that should be tied in with that process. The other thing that we did emphasize, even though it was also, all, all of these were mentioned in last year's submission, and that is ADA. Uh, we have one elevator in the entire building which makes access to some parts of the building really, for all practical purposes, um, very, very difficult for someone who has to use a wheelchair or crutches and um, emphasize that because we know that those are two particular security, the um, ADA compliance, and, is, and is certainly the structure of the building are three of the important things that MSBA um, really want to look very closely at. So you have a copy of it. Um, the only, the, the documents that are going to be uh, submitted with it are the same as last year's, except for the new enrollment report, which, which you have. So we're here also to ask, answer any questions that you might have, and as you know, Mr. Hainer has been chair of our school committee um, for the last year. Did you want to say Okay, anything? Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Bode. Um, so I, I do like that um, this is going to be focused um, a little bit more heavily on safety, ADA, and permeability, as you mentioned. I think when we went on the tour last year, um, that, that really stuck out to me. Um, being able to you know, walk in a back door is um, frightening at times, and I think that if, um, if we can really stress that, uh, this will go a long way. Um, so I, I guess first, uh, I'll move approval. Um, gladly. And I guess the Second. question is, um, can you talk a little bit about the process moving forward and what we can do to kind of assist this process and achieve a best outcome? Um, certainly. I, I will mention in terms of moving, there's very specific language that has to be probably read into the record tonight okay. and uh, Mr. Chaplin I think has, yeah, has that. First oh, the first. Vote. Oh, okay. um, it should probably, we, the school committee read it into the into the re, into the record. It actually changed from last year somewhat. Um, so this is updated language. Okay. So uh, to that point, as far as the process of moving forward, um, <coughs> we certainly should involve our representatives uh, to see what how support they can give us. It really is an issue of what uh, what other schools and districts were competing against this year. Last year, um, there were over 220 submissions. Uh, about half were core programs, half were accelerated repair. But on the other hand, the MSBA has a limited amount of money which comes from the sales tax. And I think that in any given year, it's a plus or minus around 500 million. And when they accept a school into the program, they literally encumber the money so that you know, what, you know, in a rough sense, because the, the actual dollars are not known until you go through the feasibility study. But they don't agree to moving forward unless they have the funds that are going to be able to support the project within a reasonable range. We will not probably find out until next December. It's about where it will be as it was this last year. Uh, at least that's the timetable that we, we are aware of right now. I just want to add one other thing. This whole process is also subject to, uh, to, to the whim of nature and God. Uh, a disaster happens as it did out in Springfield a couple of years ago. Brand new school got destroyed. So everybody got pushed down on the potential list coming up and that school had to come in. I have no idea what's happened to the school in Somerville who just lost its roof in one of the snowstorms. I do know the school my daughter teaches in in Lexington, they found PCB underneath it and from discovery to a brand new school was three years. So they get prioritized. So with all the things we've got going, I mean, it's important. Our NEASC certification is in jeopardy. And the only area that we, could, we got hit negatively was the facility. The quality of our education, the quality of the programs going, accepting the impact of the facility. So we've, we're producing a great product in a, in a bad facility. I, I've got to say that. 
have Mrs. Dunn next. Uh, I just, I'm very happy to support it, and uh, I think it's the message if our for me, for to is we're ready when the state is, and I, I think that one of the things we worked on really hard last year was to talk about it with the community and make sure the community was on board. I think we've done that, and I think that we should continue to do those efforts. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we are ready when the state is. Mr. Curry. Yeah, thank you. I just want to say this hits very close to home to me. My my oldest daughter is entering the high school next year. She actually took her tour on Friday, um, and I know that. With the way that the timetables work, that uh, we were, there's really no hope for her to see to see this work. Maybe the younger one, may, maybe. But um, you know, th thank you for the work on this, um, and I'm glad you clarified what has changed. That it's just the enrollment data that's that's in here. Because our packets this week were 580 pages long, so I'd love to say I read every comma, but I skimmed through this because it looked like it was mostly material from last year. And your enrollment projections are actually backed up by another item on our agenda. Um, we have the open space reports being presented as a lot of census data that shows the town adding several thousand people over the coming decades. So a lot of those are going to be students uh, entering our schools. So this is um, um, in incredibly important for us. Um, you know, Dan is right. We've 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 worked the, with the community. It's one of the most common questions I hear, not only from other parents but also from alumni of Arlington High who've been out for decades who care about their, their alma mater and uh, the condition of it. So I, I think that you're going to find a, a, a groundswell of support in the community going forward. It's just convincing the state at this point. Um, so uh, I think we're all singing from the same page here. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you want me to read this into the record, I, am, I believe? Okay. So this is Mr. Burns' uh, uh, motion. Having convened in an open meeting on March 30th, 2015, prior to the closing date, the Board of Selectmen of Arlington, in accordance with its charter bylaws and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest dated on or before April 10th, 2015, for the Arlington High School, located at 869 Massachusetts Avenue, Arlington, Massachusetts, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority category for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. And do the rest, all, all of this? Yes. Prevention, uh, so they're num they're not, there's not one and two, but it starts with it number three. Five. Okay, so three. Prevention of the loss of accreditation due to the poor state of the facility. Four, prevention of severe overcrowding expected to result from increased enrollments currently being experienced at the elementary and middle school levels. Five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy related costs in a school facility as is consistent with a complex of buildings whose last major renovation took place more than 30 years ago. Seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements as needed to bring a structure sections of which are not less than 30 years, and some sections as much as 100 years old, up to modern educational standards of safety, security, and comfort. And hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the Statement of Interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the town to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Marie, would you read that back to me, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions, comments? Uh, on the motion by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. Judd is also here. Thank you. <laughs> I heard you, Kevin. Chuck <laughs> <laughs> Pierce. Chuck Pierce. 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 Mr. Judd. I'll be, I'll be Miss Diane. As soon as I said it, I said that's not right. But anyhow, Citizens Open Forum. 
We ask uh, that people get in the habit of signing in, and we appreciate that the two are standing there did. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. The first speaker I have here, a uh, former member of this board, Ms. Clarissa Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. It's nice to have you back in the chair seat. Thank you. Um, I'm here as a member of the Arlington Land Trust and um, also as a precinct town meeting member for four. Um, as you know, in the past, I have been against any Mugar development. One of the things I've found in the last week is since our last town meeting votes in 2001 and before that in 2000, there are a lot of new people that have moved into the neighborhood of um, precincts one, three, two, four, which are, who will be most affected by the flooding in the area. One of the things that we feel very strongly about is um, bringing information to them. And um, my friend Jennifer Seuss is one of the people that wants to know more about this development. I'm very lucky because when I was board chair, Brian Sullivan and I negotiated with the same developer and the same owner to no effect. But that was 2008 and the recession was tanking. Um, there's a lot to be learned <coughs> about this project. Um, poor Spencer had to sit with Brian Rerig and myself for an hour and a half to get, we'd had a long talk about the history from 1630 on. <laughs> <So> <laughs> you only went back that far? We went, we went back to the Great Swamp. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, um, Mr. Lade, who's hiding back there, and I, and a number of town meeting members are putting together um, a coalition. The coalition's name changes every day. I think it's now Coalition to Save Our Wetlands, but um, its name is evolving. What we're doing, what we'd like to do is be here to help you all. We know that you um, will be notified when the um, developer puts in a 40B application. We, we will try to educate the new um, people that have come into town about what the problems with that particular site are, um, most specifically the flooding and the traffic. Um, we're not against development. As you know, I became the development face for the Sims project when I was on the select board, I do it for a living, I understand it. We are not against development in this town, nor are we against affordable housing. We have a tremendous record um, on affordable housing. We just don't want it there. So I want George to talk a little bit more about the coalition and then I'll come back and ask some of the questions that I wanna ask you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Members of the board, Mr. Manager, Town Council, Ms. Kropelka, thank you for this opportunity to be before you tonight to talk on this matter of urgent importance. Uh, first of all, congratulations to both Mr. Byrne and Mr. Curo on your decisive respective victories on Saturday. <laughs> and you too also. Yes. Yes. We both were we both, yes. yes. <laughs> we both Sorry, that's decisively. <laughs> In any case, uh, this proposal as we have uh, understood it, and thanks to the advocate for having covered it the way uh, it has, uh, this particular proposal is uh, not a very good one from what we can see and for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one I think is that uh, we believe, and Clarissa will address this I think a little later, that the town has met its legal threshold in order to essentially, essentially not have a 40B, to prohibit the 40B proposal. And uh, I think we believe that, that those numbers are there. It's not a matter of uh, technical skill in order to develop those numbers and reach a determination that a 40B will not be here in Arlington. It's more a matter of political will. And I think that is what we're hoping uh, that we can encourage uh, tonight. Uh, secondly, the proposal, I think, is, uh, has serious flaws in that they wish to develop and build on wetlands. And I think most people by now realize that wetlands perform a very valuable function, many valuable functions, 
one of which is they act as a sponge to absorb water during peak uh, rainfall. And to build on a wetland is not a good idea. Uh, we've seen ample uh, studies done over the years correlating the negative impacts of development uh, and its relationship, its correlation to flooding. Uh, this could only increase flooding in East Arlington, where it already has reached epic proportions. We have not had the flooding we have now over as long as I've lived in East Arlington and, and prior to that, according to many of my, my friends. So this can only create problems for us in terms of, of flooding. That area is extremely important. It's very fragile, very important part of the ecosystem that helps protect us against significant flooding events. Another issue that I think we need to examine more thoroughly will be the traffic impacts. As we all know, that area is already impacted beyond any critical uh, threshold. It's a serious problem, particularly if they're developing on Dorothy Road, which I understand is the case. There will be traffic, obviously, coming through that neighborhood, a neighborhood that is much too small to carry any more vehicles than already go through that area. So those are just a few of the things I think that we're concerned about uh, that need to be addressed. And we do seek the support of the board in our efforts to uh, convince Mr. Mugar that this is not a good idea. Uh, I will go back to a number of years ago, uh, as many of you probably know, I worked for the state senator from Arlington as a district director for many years. And uh, one, one of the recent, uh, one of the earlier proposals, uh, the Mugar's representatives asked to meet with the senator to seek his, of course, support for this proposal. Well, he surprised them by having me join him in the meeting. And they did ask Bob Haven, if he would, uh, what did he think about the plan? And his answer to them was, your plow is in hard ground, in very hard ground. Or wet ground. Mm -hmm. In wet ground. <laughs> but the ground is not soft enough to plow, that is for certain. It hasn't changed much in all the years since we had that conversation with the MUGA representatives. Uh, that was a pivotal meeting, I think, since Bob was the chairman of transportation, the committee of transportation at that time, and they needed a curb cut, which obviously he was not inclined to support. But in any case, I think it's clear that there was a great deal of opposition that came up in East Arlington and throughout all of Arlington. I'm going to predict for you now that there will be equally vigorous opposition to this proposal as it moves forward. You will see, I think, great numbers of people taking an active role in protecting their neighborhood, protecting Arlington, and essentially the environment itself. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. And we have specifically, at the moment, the coalition has two groups. Um, hopefully soon the... Um, Good Neighbors, East Arlington, East Arlington, 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 Arlington. and the um, Arlington Land Trust. We want to get every individual and every group that wants to be part of the coalition to be part of it. Um, Adam asked me today what the contact information was, and at the moment it happens to be my email, um, which hmm. is clarissa.row at comcast.net. My phone number is 781-643-3156. I don't promise to answer the call. <laughs> within 24 hours, but I'll give <laughs> um, The other thing we want to do is ask you to please write a letter to the MUGARs. I know that in, um, the planning director has called them and written them since we passed the Community Preservation Act, but if you can, um, thinking about it, write them and say we would like to negotiate with them directly without um, not going through Oak Tree, that would be I think a good idea if the lawyer that the town hires suggests that. Um, we think it would be a good idea. The second, th um, then, then the third, th uh, the second thing was the 40B calculations and um, submitting those. The third thing is to do some sort of resolution or a warrant article if you can do it, if there's a special town meeting um, for this spring town meeting. Having the town meeting votes in early 2000 and 2001 are not really good enough. We need to get another vote um, that will help us with any kind of legal challenge that comes up. So we're asking you to please put something on the, the warrant in whatever form, you, whether it has to be a resolution or whatever. And that's what we're asking tonight. Okay, Ms. Mahan. We're, it is Citizens Open Forum, and this is a really important issue. Um, I guess I would like to go through this here. First of all, um, you are the, newly elected chairman, here's one of your first issues. Um, so I anticipate, you know, the lack of response from the board tonight is this is an important yes. issue, and I would leave it to the purview and coordination of the chairman and the town manager in terms of when and how many times it appears on the agenda, um, as well as the three suggestions put forth, um, if the chairman and the town manager could um, sort of 
caffeinate around that um, and then come back with possible action step or steps. Uh, and secondly, if I could through you, um, Mr. Grayley, if, um, and if you don't, that's okay. If the town manager has any comments or guidance he wishes to give either the citizens at open forum or members of the board. Mr. Chairman. Right. So I, I would simply say, uh, thank you, Clarissa. Thank you, George. Uh, I think all of these requests that you've made are reasonable considerations for the board. Uh, today, myself, town council, and the planning director did uh, speak with <coughs> one attorney and plan to assess some further options, but make a very quick decision to bring outside uh, legal expertise in regards to a 40B proposal. Uh, once that's accomplished, I think we should have a conversation with that selected attorney about the path we should follow for these items and others, and then have an agenda item at either the next or the following Board of Selectmen meeting to make some decisions. Right. We really don't have anything in front of us yet, but no, we, 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 we know we something. understand that. And we're just very appreciative that you could fit us in tonight. I wouldn't dare say no to you, Clarissa, <laughs> truth Good. be told. But, uh, <laughs> No, no problem, but, I'm, but I, you know, you and George demonstrate why you're the community leaders you are uh, jumping on this as, as you both mm -hmm. have. And George, you look terrific. Buddy. Well, thank you. You're, I, feel, I hope you feel as healthy as you're looking. I feel, I feel okay. So, I mean, it's up to my colleagues, but I feel we need to wait. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly, I'd love to meet with the Mugars if that, that's an opportunity. Yeah, Mr. Dunn. I, I, I'm, thank you very much for bringing this up. I think that it is a very much a very serious issue for our town and for the neighborhood, and um, I, I don't have. I think that the, it is a time that we should take it to, uh, take our time. But I will be. I, um, I'm going to be giving it a lot of attention. I'm sure we all will. Thank yeah, you great. for being here. One of the th other things I think there are two town meeting um, warrant discussions for a bunch of um, precincts, and they're all both on the afternoon of April 26th. I think some of the higher precincts are in the senior center, and um, the East Arlington precincts are going to be invited to the Hardy School mm -hmm. from 1 to 3. So we'll get more information out to you all. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda, item number eight for approval, Arlington Public Art Youth Initiative banners on Massachusetts uh, Avenue. Adria Arch. Um, Welcome. Hi. Um, thanks for hearing us out. Um, so um, I have with me Thomas Hartle. And um, he uh, came to me after um, seeing Chairful Where You Sit last year with a wonderful proposal to um, uh, have a Youth um, Public Art Initiative, and I'm just going to let him introduce himself to you. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Thomas Hartle. Thank you for the opportunity to um, speak to you tonight. Um, this is really something in memory of our daughter, Gracie James. She went to the Dallin, she went to the Audison. She would have graduated in 2012 from the high school. Um, she was killed in a car accident. And, um, but she was an artist. Uh, she loved to write, she loved to paint, and as Eddie was saying, was really inspired by visiting chapel where you sit um, and thinking, wow, Gracie would have loved this. And that's sort of where the idea came from to, to sponsor an uh, arts initiative specifically for, for um, middle school and high school age uh, children, uh, young, young adults. Um, and um, I'll, I'll let Nadia explain the rest of it. So I think you all have the proposal, yeah. Um, and I guess what we're, well I know, what we're asking for is your permission to um, have this go forth as a um, pilot project for next year and have the banners on view from April till June or some, you know, couple of months, three, we're hoping for three month period um, in the spring of 2016. Okay, move, Mr. Carroll. Move approval. Second. 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 Uh, I just, um, I think it's a wonderful way to, to, to honor your, uh, your daughter. I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, and um, once again, it's, an, an, it's a, creative, a creative expression, and I, I love the fact that once again, we're including our, our, um, our students, as we have in some other projects in town, some of the other public arts uh, projects in town. Um, 
and um, I, I look forward to you know supporting this in any way that we can. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Mohan. Um, a question in terms of who coordinates um, with both Adrian and um, Thomas. Sorry for your loss. I appreciate that. Um, is it the town manager's office about getting the banners up? Is it the selectman's office? Okay, and my only other thing would be I will leave it to both parties to work in terms of if there are any already established, you know, sometimes when the Robbins Library does the Robbins Read and stuff like that. Right. You know, I'll, I'll let you work out the logistics of that. I just know I think it's it would be more cost effective for you all that, um, you know, you're not taking down a banner and putting it up two weeks later. So I'll let you work out the logistics. Just to, in case, I, I can't think off at the top of my head if there are any established banners that get hung. It's more towards town day and in the fall. I think you're right. going to be fine with this thing. Okay. But, but I'll leave it to you to work with Mrs. Kropelka just to make sure. Because I don't want you to have to put them up and take them down. Right. You know, and then, right. You know, just do appreciate <laughs> the donation and the money it's going to cost. Thank you again. So sorry yeah. for your loss. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And, um, yeah, no, I, I think this is awesome. This is um, really nice. You can tell it's really thoughtful. And, um, yeah, I just want to thank you. This is great. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Very sorry for your loss. Wonderful uh, way to memorialize. Uh, so, on the motion by Mr. Curo, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine for approval, a letter of support for the updated plan of the 2015 Open Space and Recreation Plan, Ann LaRoyer, Chair of the Open Space Committee. Welcome, Ann. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you again. Thanks for uh, letting me come out tonight. Um, as uh, you know from all the hundreds of pages of material that we sent you, <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've read it all you know, word by word, but we just, I just <laughs> wanted to uh, ask for, you know, obviously ask for your support. Um, specifically, we uh, would like to get a letter of support that we can incorporate into the plan. And um, I sent the office a sample of last year's <laughs> letter just so you have something to kind of go on. Last time's letter, I should say. Um, and let me, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just give a little bit of um, background information and highlights just to remind some of you and, and inform newer members that might not be aware of all the, the process. Um, the first open space plan in Arlington was done in 1996. So um, many of these have been done. And as uh, Mr. Gilly said, this is an update of the plan that was last um, approved in 2007. And um, again, as you probably know, but the, it's the state um, division of conservation services in the um, executive office of energy and environmental affairs. That's the state agency that has the authority, so to speak, to approve the plan. We have to submit it to them for official approval, and then we're able to apply for state grants, and there's certain protocols that having that approval from the state is, um, is a good thing. But, of course, we also want support and approval within the town. So um, that's one reason we're here. Uh, we are also um, just went down to the um, redevelopment board early this evening, they adopted the open space, the new open space plan draft, which is essentially done, but there will be just some corrections and things editing made. Um, we'll also be going to the Park and Recreation Commission and the Conservation Commission to get letters and the um, M MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. That's just part of the protocol that we usually do. So I just want to let you know that's the context. Um, also, in terms of the plan itself, as I said, this is, is a, a draft. It's a pretty final draft, but it's, it is a, a draft. And if you looked at it carefully, you might have seen a lot of funny characters or missing characters and letters and things, <laughs> which was quite shocking when I first <laughs> noticed that myself. Um, the, uh, it's because we sent around a low-resolution PDF file, mm -hmm. and evidently when they compressed the file, some of the formatting got lost. I don't know, but at any rate, that will certainly be fixed. And there are um, a few other editing things that have to be uh, fixed, but essentially it's, it's done. It's been the result of about a year's worth of work that we've put into this. Um, so um, also, as I, I wanted to say that thank you again to the, the board and also town meeting approved a CDBG grant that we used 
to hire uh, VHB to help us do the, some of the work on, on putting this together, but it was largely the volunteers on the Open Space Committee that did it. So if I could just mention a couple of highlights, um, you might have picked up on these yourselves. Um, one of them is um, there's a wonderful set of new maps that um, Adam Kurowski and the planning department uh, put together for us, uh, both town-wide maps showing different locations and then um, site maps of 20 of the major sites that we highlighted there. Um, those are in chapter five, if you want to have to look at them. Um, <clears throat> so we're, we're hoping that one of the um, goals that we have for nec the next five to seven years as this plan um, works itself through is to work with the town um, and the website to kind of break up some of this information and make it accessible to people so that when they're walking around town with their smartphones, they can download a map of the reservoir and see where the trail goes and see what streets, how they can get there and you know start to get the information that's in here, both the maps and the text information, you know, more accessible to people so that they can be, be aware of these places and find them. Um, one of the sources we used this year to get public input was the Vision 2020 um, survey that was done a year ago, January. And one of the, we asked about some of the little known open spaces like Mount Goboa and um, Cook's Hollow and some of the tiny places that are, that are not playing fields and you know the, the rink or the reservoir that a lot of people don't know about or maybe it's not in their neighborhood. And so this kind of uh, resource would really help people just become more aware of what we have around town. So the second thing I want to mention is the chapter two is in the accomplishments. And um, it's quite a long list if you had a chance to look through and all the, the kinds of things that have been done over the past seven years since um, 2007. Elizabeth Island certainly is a very important piece. Sims development and the new parks and um, conservation restriction on the land up there, that's in terms of open space and public access to open space is great. Um, there's all the um, work on water bodies and invasives and there's lots of things that are, you know, they're all documented in there. I won't, won't go into too much detail, but the um, Community Preservation Act, of course, is another major thing last year that um, is gonna help us in the future with fundraising and uh, working with the master plan uh, advisory committee and the planning board to um, be sure that the goals and objectives that are in this open space plan complement and you know, work closely together with the goals um, that are in the uh, master plan. So we, we use their research and information a lot to kind of supplement some of the new material that we put into the open space plan as well. Um, in the, the last part, the major part is the um, action plan, that's chapter nine, that sort of itemizes a lot of the <coughs> specific um, things that we hope to try to achieve. Many, most of them really are ongoing things having to do with you know maintenance and water quality and invasives and all those kinds of things, park, um, park and playground maintenance and the playing fields and so forth. Um, protection of the Mugar land is very important in that set of, um, goals, so that's timely now, and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, having the open space plan in place, this updated one, with a little bit stronger language, um, and having the redevelopment board adopting it um, makes a town policy, and I, I hope that you will do the same. So I just uh, thank you for your interest and support, and um, I will be presenting just the just a report to town meeting as I usually do, just as a report from the open space committee that the plan exists and it'll get up on the website and so forth. But um, anyway, I certainly want to come to you first. So thank you very much. Yeah, Ms. Mahan. Thank you for this. I really appreciate all the time and effort that's gone into this. I'm gonna say my favorite chapters are eight and nine. <laughs> um, and I, I really wanna highlight in view of the previous discussion, because um, I believe Spencer has a, is also on a laptop. Um, the goals and objectives on page 117, goal one and goal two, um, speak about goal one, acquire ecologically valuable undeveloped lands or ensure their protection through conservation restrictions or other means. And goal two, I won't read the whole thing, but it says preserve, maintain, and enhance existing open spaces, including watersheds, water bodies, and natural 
areas, et cetera. Um, so I, I'm really pleased to see all the goals that are in there, but in, especially in light of the conversation we had previously. And then the only other thing I wanted to point out, because A, you, if you've done the work, and just to come with the beginning, perhaps, of a consistent voice, and it was the um, action plan goals and objectives table, where you do highlight on page 121, um, under goal one, that one, two, um, says work with Arlington Land Trust, other groups, town officials, and landowners to negotiate acquisitions, conservation restrictions, transfers of development rights, or other means to protect undeveloped privately owned property that could be developed under current zoning regulations, including the Mugar lands. So um, I was really pleased to see that, and I know you and I and previous speakers have worked on a variety of di different citizen issues throughout the town, but I'm so pleased to see this document. Um, I, I think it'll be a good, valuable too, including you also mentioned the Arlington High football field, so, but I won't go into everything because everybody here has read it, and, uh, but I was really pleased in light of the previous discussion on the Citizens Open Forum, and I just wanted to highlight those two areas. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, the reference to the Mugar land, I think, has been in the open space mm -hmm. plans almost from the beginning, and mm -hmm. You know, it gets tweaked a little bit. We, you know, put in the, the votes that Clarissa had mentioned and town meeting that's in there earlier. You know, so trying to present as strong a, a face as we can to say that there's lots of precedent here already for um, supporting conservation of that land. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dunn. Um, I, I'll move approval. If I don't think Mrs. Mahan, did you second. move? Oh, do you want it done? Uh, mm, I move second. approval. Uh, I will, the report was a pleasure to read. I really enjoyed it. I thought, I mean, I've read the previous ones before, and I thought I was ex expecting to see, you know, an updated version of the previous one, and I got a ton of really good information, and uh, I really, I thought it was an excellent document and really well worth the time. And so, Great. Well, there's thank a, you. Yeah, there's a draft up right now. If you if you want to go online, you can look at the Selectman's report. Excuse me, not the Selectman's report, but like a or the documents for this meeting include uh, the draft that you do that. Oh, so okay. someone could go online and download the draft. And of course, when you finish it, the, the, the final, they'll be yeah, able to get that. It'll look a lot better. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it, you know, it drops a letter here and there because of the PDF, but the, the message is clear. It's yeah. really well done, I enjoyed it. At least they didn't lose the photos, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and the maps, like you said, yes. very good. Thank you, yeah, those photos are fantastic. Um, thank you, and, and the hand of a professional editor is very, very evident here, so uh, thank you, Anne. Um, I, I enjoyed it. The inventory of all the um, public lands and recreation areas that we have was particularly helpful, as is the action plan at the end, which is somewhat similar to the format that we saw in the master plan, right. except this goes a little further with short-term, mid-term, and long-term steps and some special funding sources called out, which is, um, I think, uh, very helpful. Um, <clears throat> the uh, inventory it actually starts to get close to something that we've talked about as a board. I think we discussed this at our goal setting session um, after we had the surprise over the DAV building, so in terms of some of our physical assets, but also land, um, because we do have a, um, a perennial question that comes up every year. You usually say that Athanasius holds their annual festival, and oftentimes in their packet to us, they ask for permission to use the lower practice field at the Audison, we have to say, well, that's not under our jurisdiction. It's never quite clear whose jurisdiction it is in. That one was the one place probably in the whole town that I didn't see in the, in the list, and we've been trying to, um, I think, get to the bottom of that for, for a while. Well, yeah, I, I certainly couldn't swear to the accuracy. But you had an so awful lot in there that I didn't. I <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're talking about the crusher? The inventory, you have a, you have a chart. The, the, the um, crusher I wish lot it, and the Addison School line? The, the, the plate, Page 95, the is that the, where you are? I'm in my memory is where I am. Um, yeah, I don't think it's on the chart, to tell you the truth. There's a lower it, practice field. Do you know, any of the board oh, members that, know what that's there's called? There's one on Acton Street that the school Correct. has purview over, and there's one I want to say on Appleton, is that, Correct. That, yeah. which is they call the lower. It's like if you go up Quincy, you, take, you want to take a left on Howard to my house, you take a right, there's a parking lot, and right next to that, they call that the lower. Yeah, I couldn't say It's this a J Jason to St. I'm sorry, St. Athanasius' is parking lot, former St. James. Yeah. 
This just says Crusher Lot and Audison Field. Which so is the upper. That's the upper. Which is the upper. upper field. So but it's because of that issue coming up that actually this is exactly oh. the type of chart that we've been looking for that That's has exactly who has the jurisdiction, how yeah. much land. Um, what the condition is. I mean, that's it's really helpful. As as I as I'm sure you know, Joe, the um, master plan also wants to do more inventory work, yeah. and as well the conservation commission in terms of water bodies. Yeah. And so the open space committee is going to work with them as well to be, be sure that we do inventory everything that we can, and yeah. with the assessor's records and whatever else other sources. It, it, there's a lot of, uh, I found by talking with Adam Korowski about um, the maps and trying to get correct acreages on all these different parcels. Uh, there are different ways of counting acreage from the assessors to the, you know, the different entities that actually own the property. There are, certainly have been discrepancies with the Meadowbrook Park and the cemetery. We went around and around trying to figure out the acreages of who had what. Um, I mean, I think we got down to it, but anyway, it, it is something that's a little fuzzy, but we should be able to, you know, try to pull, pull resources to get, you know, everybody on the same page. Well, it's very worthwhile, and it's very, it's very helpful to me looking at it. This is a, a start, at least. <laughs> um, one of the other things that you mentioned was, um, you know, the, the, the little-known park areas, and I know you had the series in The Advocate um, as, yes, as, as right. well on that. You mentioned having downloadable maps from the town's website to try to help people get yeah. there. I, I'm sure you're familiar that, uh, with our approval recently of uh, across Lexington, that yeah. they do this this uh, marked um, walking trail program, right. and we approved allowing them to go through um, Arlington Great Meadows, I, I think past part of the reservoir as well. Um, has there been any thought of, of, of something similar in Arlington with actually marked trails that might connect together a few of these lesser known, like I think of like the reservoir and Mount Gilboa maybe, uh, places that, that other that folks that might otherwise sort of not know how to get to. <laughs> um, not specifically, but it's a good idea. I'll yeah. take it back to the committee. Um, I know that some years ago, the Conservation Commission worked on something called walking, walking the open spaces of Arlington, I think, something like that. And there was an effort some time ago to try to reactivate that, re-implement yeah. um, it and um, update it again and make it um, accessible for smartphones and that sort of thing, just get it up online. That's under the purview of the Conservation Commission and I think it sort of fell off the charts a little bit. But it's part of the same effort. I mean, we're all kind of trying to do the same thing. So I think that... Um, yeah, working with the CONCOM on that and, and getting ideas from the Lexington like group, perhaps. Certainly in certain neighborhoods in like East Arlington, the, the Minuteman Trail and the new Greenway Trail and all the places around Spy Pond. I mean, there's sort of natural pockets or, you know, connections that do exist already. So um, that's, that might that be a way, be a way to virtually to connect on. them through trail yeah. markers, you know, through. And sign, notes. I know the Park and Rec is always talking about trying to get better signage and the town, town-wide as well um, with the historic signs. That's, those have been really nice. And so maybe that's another way we can work on this is to get some better signage and identifying these, um, you know, links. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Um, I, I agree with, uh, I think, everything my colleagues have said. But thank you very much. Um, I, I guess when I, I saw this on the agenda and I opened it up, I really didn't know what to expect, and it, it kind of blew me away um, how um, how informative this plan really is. Um, and I think it was a really good use of CDBG funding, and it's something that, you know, kind of, it, there was a pretty quick turnaround with it, which we, is, isn't always the case, so I, I do appreciate that, and I'm happy that it was supported uh, through that funding. Um, the only, um, I guess, constructive criticism I have, I, I was looking at the map, uh, the action plan map, or yeah. the action plan focus locations map, um, and when, when I first looked at it, and after our discussion, I, I, I realized that I don't think it's the case, but how it's numbered 1 through 14, when I first saw it, I, I thought that it appeared to me like it's a priority list. Yeah. Um, so that's just... Um, the, the it's only more thing geographic that, really stuck, that yeah. it started in the 
the, west and moved the, east. <laughs> that, that, that's what I assumed, but I, I guess just when, when I when I first looked at it. So maybe if there were, there was a little note that you know this is a you know strictly geographic numbering, not a priority list or something okay. along those mm -hmm. lines. Um, but other than that, I, I think it's really great, and I thank you and um, everyone else who was involved for your work. Okay. Thank you. Everybody? Thank you. Um, so, uh, like my colleagues, very impressed with the, with the report. Um, and if I may, how many years have you been standing guard over our open space? Uh, let's see. Um, probably since '99, I think. God love you. That I got on the open space committee. Eighty yeah. ninety. Yeah. Eighty nine. No, 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 <laughs> no. I think it was ninety nine or yeah. ninety eight, maybe. I I can't remember now. Well, still, that service. <laughs> it's been a while. This is the, well, the second major plan that I guess I've worked on. That service is exemplary, thank you, as is this report. So on the motion by Mr. Dunn, which is approval for us to, uh, again, this year write a letter of support to be included in this plan, uh, seconded by uh, Mrs. Mahan. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Quite a lot of writing coming up for the new chairman. <laughs> the new chairman. Marie, you got this, right? <laughs> you'll, put it in, you'll put it in front of me to sign, won't you, Marie? Okay, 11 of future BOS meetings will take later. Warren article hearings. Uh, I don't believe anybody is here in the audience on 14, so we'll take up 15 now first. And article 15 was uh, tabled from our was it the 22nd? Was it a February meeting? Yeah, 223. Two, okay. So uh, this this is a uh, uh, this is a Warren article submitted at the request of Mr. Loretti and 10 registered voters. Is Mr. Loretti here? No. Okay. So I see Mary Wynn Stanley uh, from the Board of Assessors. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Good evening. Good evening. No, but uh, Doug, you want to do a little intro here first? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, as the board may recall, uh, the entire uh, article, the scope uh, that Mr. Loretti contemplated for this Warren article was not tabled at the previous Board of Select meeting. The uh, were two sort of major components to Mr. Loretti's proposal after a fair amount of deliberation by the board, um, as well as a recusal by yourself, Mr. Chairman. Um, the board moved uh, for no action with respect to a proposal to transform the Board of Assessors from an elected body to an appointed body, which is significant for two reasons. One, because of the scope of the conversation uh, the board's to have today is, is basically oriented around the part of Mr. Loretti's proposal that speaks to having the director of assessments um, appointed by the town manager or some other process other than the current process which is appointed by the Board of Assessors. The other reason it's significant is I know that Mr. Greeley, you recused yourself because your uh, brother is a member of the Board of Assessors, but that issue now being off the table, it's no longer you know, an issue of concern for you or for anybody else with respect to an appearance of a conflict or anything of that nature. Okay, so what we are discussing tonight is the whether or not the Director of Assessments, Mr. Tierney, uh, would be appointed by the town manager or Right, that's the only part of the article we're discussing. So it was my understanding of the board's vote that uh, Mr. Loretti was basically highlighting the many recommendations that the Department of Revenue had made, um, which do go beyond those two issues, but that the two issues that were major points of discussion for this board were one, whether the Board of Assessors should uh, remain in a, uh, an elected body versus an appointed body, and secondly, whether the, there should be any change to the way that the Director of Assessments is appointed and supervised. Uh, okay. I believe, uh, if my recollection is correct and my notes are correct, uh, Ms. Mahan moved for no action on the um, issue of appointment versus elected by the Board of Assessors themselves, and that was a successful vote um, of three to one. The uh, second issue was tabled till this hearing so that the Board of Assessors could weigh in from their perspective. I don't necessarily mean that to, in to indicate that the Board of Assessors couldn't speak to whatever they wanted to about this, Article. I just wanted to note that the board had previously moved no action on the issue of changing from elected to appointed. So I'm sorry, since I did recuse myself, are we t no. is that now two warrant articles? 
No, Ms. Loretti's uh, article has quite a broad scope. Right. And the primary reference point for that article is the Department of Revenue, Revenue's recommendations. Right, right. Those recommendations weren't only limited to the Board of Assessors. Uh, as the, this board may recall, there was discussion about a consolidated municipal finance department. Right. But the major crux of, of his Warren article was, to my understanding, those two issues, and those are the issues that this board discussed at the previous right. meeting. Can you help me? I, can I, can I, still, I, can I, I still try? Only because yeah. what happened was, my memory is, um, Mr. Loretti came before us in a, the approximately 23 recommendations. He was highlighting recommendation three and four. I can't remember which was which. One was motion we've already taken, no action to change the Board of Assessors from elected to appointed. Then there was further discussion on the next facet of it, which was um, to whom does the Director of Assessments report. Right. Um, and I had said, and some if not all of my colleagues who were here, we would really be interested in what the Board of Assessors um, opinion would be on that, because um, I certainly would be guided on, guided on that, because there was some conversation that this conversation was held previously, and a position was represented, and I would rather hear um, exactly from the Board of Assessors um, and not accept. I'm not saying the position represented wasn't the position you all took, but it may have changed or may not be that case. So that's where we're at. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not getting this. Mr. Wait, wait, please, let me ask the question, because I've asked it three times, I think, so I still haven't gotten it. So, we, so now we're going to discuss this board's position on an appointed by the manager or by the Board of Assessors. So let me just for a minute pretend this, this board votes favorable action on that. On the original Warren article now, we have favorable action on the first sentence and non-favorable action on the second. So why I'm asking that is, is this one Warren article or it's been separated into two? It is one or Warren article, Mr. Greeley. And if, if I may, I'll read the Warren article just so it's, it's, it's crystal clear for everybody. The article was, to see if the town will vote to implement the recommendations of the 2012 Massachusetts Department of Revenue Town and School Finance Analysis. Report to make the Director of Assessments an appointment of the town manager and to consider changing or to change the Board of Assessors from an elected to an appointed board, board or take any action related thereto. So it is one Warren article. I think this board could, in theory, move basically saying favorable action only on a limited part is essentially what the vote would end up being. And so you'd basically be moving no, you don't necessarily have to cage it as no favorable action, but you could cage it as favorable action in these specific terms and not these other ones. Adam, did you want to? Yeah, I, if I may, Mr. Chair, yeah, the, the Attorney Heim just summed it up. No action could be no action totally, but yep. any favorable action could have some shape and form of what was covered by the warrant article. Okay. That would be. Sorry, Mary. That's okay. I Good know. evening. Um, I'm here this evening to speak because Mr. Greeley is a little under the weather. He is the newly elected chairman of the Board of Assessors. I am the newly elected vice. Um, recently elected, uh, Assessor Kevin Feely is here, and our Director of Assessments, Paul Tierney, is here as well. The position of the Board of Assessors on this bifurcated issue, which is now bifurcated now, is that the Director of Assessment should be, continue to be appointed by the Board of Assessors. And there are several um, reasons for that. This, um, the issue of the elected versus appointed Board of Assessors came up in front of you several years ago. And as a result of that DOR report and those recommendations, the Board of Assessors engaged in a dialogue with the town manager concerning his input into the selection of the Director of Assessment. At that point in time, previous to that, the Board of Assessors was solely responsible for selecting the Director of Assessment. As a result of that dialogue and that discussion, there was a mutually acceptable agreement reached that the town manager would have involvement in the selection of the board, uh, the director of the Board of Assessors by participating on a screening committee. So a screening committee was developed with four people, the town manager or his appointee, and in this recent go-round, it was the assistant town manager, um, Karen Cove, Mr. Gilligan, and a member of the Board of Assessors. So in fact, the town manager had two delegates on that screening committee, and on each occasion they recommended three candidates to the Board of Assessors, and we selected from one of those candidates that were recommended. It's very important to note that though the Director of Assessments reports to the Board of Assessors, 
And as you know, the Town Manager Act specifically provides for the Board of Assessors and the Treasurer's Office to be autonomous. And there's numerous reasons for that, and I'm not going to get into that now because I don't think it's relevant to this particular argument. But the Director of Assessment is part of the Town's management team. The Director of Assessment Assessors participates in the monthly management meetings. He attends all of these meetings, and he's an integral part of the entire team. We are not off to one side um, doing uh, uh, something uh, to, to the exclusion of the other town departments. We part, we, our director of assessments participates but reports to us, and our position is that he should continue to do that. He should we should continue to select the director of assessment, the board of assessors should. Um, I believe that uh, if our, the people in this town are unhappy with what the, what the Board of Assessors does, including the selection of the Director of Assessments, they have an avenue. I would also say that as the voters charge the Board of Selectmen with selecting a town manager, they basically, we are charged with the selection of the Director of Assessments. So we recommend no action, as you voted no action, and we would suggest it is appropriate for no action on the, the second part of that warrant article as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Byrne. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Leon. I guess my first point is that now that there are two Greeley, Greeley chairs in town, who's going to manage uh, dinner <laughs> discussions at Christmas? I'm very nervous about that and look forward to uh, checking in on that. May, may, I, just, <laughs> may I just comment that um, this evening was probably a, a much briefer uh, presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I, I'm going to move no action. Um, and I, 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 at our last meeting, I discussed why, but I'll just briefly state it again. Um, one, I, I don't think the system's broke. I think that um, the Board of Assessors, in appointing the Director of Assessments, um, th they're team players in this, and the town is involved. And number two, um, as I noted before, when when it came to the DOR report, I, I, I was a very big advocate of it. Um, you know, I spent uh, quite a lot of time when I was first elected to this board on getting those implementations put in. Um, and the reason why I, I supported those is because, you know, all encompassing, it was a great report. Um, taking things out uh, in a piecemeal approach is not something I would support. And I just don't think it is a, um, you know, good way to govern, and I am um, going to full heartedly support no action. Second. Okay. Second, so the next one I saw was Mr. Dunn. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to support no action as well, but I'm going to support it for a very different reason. Uh, I wish, uh, I, would act, I would prefer that we make this change, and I would prefer that the Board of Assessors chose to support this change, but I also, uh, just as I wish the Treasurer had chosen to support changing uh, his position from elected to appointed and the, the, the other things in this DOR report. But I think that, uh, and it, there was a time you know, where I took a vote to try to, to fight this out on town meeting floor, and I think that one of the things I learned from it is it, it isn't going to work and it doesn't move the ball, it doesn't move us forward as a town. And uh, I hope that in the future we can come to consensus on these changes and we can move them forward. But I do not think that having this fight when these two elected boards disagree is going to be productive. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to support a vote of no action. Mr. Kelly. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think you know that I was, I, I wanted to hear from the Board of Assessors on, on this, and I, I appreciate you coming in and, and shedding some light Definitely. on this. For, for me, in this discussion, it was never about the hiring. I, I think if you read the DOR report, it actually, their recommendation was that that the um, the board of assessors really take a, a leading role, even if the the town manager was making an ultimate appointment and, and doing the screenings. I understand we've set up a screening process that essentially flips that on its head, but still includes that that involvement from the um, w with the town manager. So that was never really um, an issue for me. Um, the issue for me is always just assurances that the director of assessments is truly integrated into and empowered as a member of the uh, the town manager's uh, leadership uh, team. You know, I think like Dan, I mean, in my heart of hearts, I think that I would prefer to see us find a way forward. I think that, that uh, you know, Steve raises some good points about doing it in piece, piecemeal fashion. At the end of the day, though, I'm, I'm very cognizant also of the fact that this was a central issue in the recent election that we, we just had. It was 
a question that was front and center both to selectmen candidates and to the Board of Assessors candidates at the candidates <coughs> night um, a couple of weeks ago. And congratulations, Mr. Feely, on your reelection. Um, and Mr. Feely won reelection two to one. And to my mind, that, that constitutes some, something of a referendum on the issue. Um, and for that reason, I will support the motion of, um, of no action. I, th I think that we, we need to respect the will of the voters in this. I just want to thank um, the Board of Assessors, Mary Wynn, Sammy O'Connor, and Kevin Feely. Get better, Mr. Bob Grayley, um, for being here tonight. It's sort of, for me, I, there was some confusion for me because the, it was sort of permeating that um, the Board of Assessors might have been considering this favorably. <coughs> so it was very important for me to hear from you all um, because I would be guided by that. And especially, in, I, I do think maybe in the future, it, if, as Mr. Dunn and others have said, um, if we come to some sort of consensus on this and or any other issue um, contained in the Mass DR <coughs> report, that that's the way to go. But I, I can't echo it even louder. You know, having the, these two boards um, with the appearance of, you know, going up against each other doesn't help anybody or any process. So um, for that reason, I want to thank you for taking the time and staying here all night. Um, I will be voting no action. Did you want to comment on this, Mr. Chaplain? Somebody comment, because I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> All right, I, I make a motion that I'll say, God bless you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm also going to support no action, although I'm 100% in favor of the coordinated finance department. Uh, and, you know, at another point in time, we'll face that. But that would have included an appointed board of assessors as well as an appointed director. But I think Mr. Paul Tierney sitting out there is an example of how the process seems to be working quite well. So. Uh, I also will support the no action. Any other comments? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I pass. I, I suppose this is an opportunity to make clear, uh, given the potential that there could be a substitute motion uh, on town meeting floor and that could put me in the position of being asked my opinion and having you not have to hear it for the first time uh, during that discussion at town meeting. Uh, I do think, uh, bless, bless you. you. Uh, I, I do think there would be a great benefit to taking a comprehensive approach, as several of the board members said tonight. Um, that being said, on its face value, I do think it would be still an appropriate measure to take to make the uh, director of assessments appointed by the town manager as one step towards the modernization of our financial department. And I, I would say something similar on town meeting floor if, if asked. Okay. All those in favor of the motion of no action by Mr. B uh, Byrne, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Mr. Greeley? Yes, sir. Um, may, I, I would like to have a brief discussion if it's appropriate about how this should be reflected in our final report. Uh, it seems to me that we should reflect two separate votes. Uh, I don't know if that, it, it would, uh, the town council's waving at me, so he has a thought on this already. No, uh, that, that is how I would put it together, Mr. Okay. Dunn, unless the board has an objection. I basically construct two votes for the purposes of the selectmen's um, report only to reflect that Mr. Greeley was not a, participating in the first part of the, the vote and the discourse that took place there, and now a second vote, even though it's under one Warren article, I think it'll be, work just fine. But our actual recommendation, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's a single recommendation of no action, That's right. and the comment includes the two discussions and includes the report that says one was four zero and one, or three one, I apologize, I forget the number. Uh, I know one was five zero and the other one was four voters. Thank you. So. Says Mr. Chairman, is that? Yes, yes. I don't have to write that, do I? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, you very much, much Mr. Bailey, Mr. Tierney. Thank you for being here. Next is Warren Article 18, the endorsement of the CDBG application. We have our Director of Planning here and our subcommittee. Who would like to speak on this? Thank you, Mr. Carol. Chairman. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Uh, the recommendation is for funding uh, in the amount of $1,273,348. Uh, the CDBG subcommittee, which was composed of Dan Dunn, Stephen Byrne, Adam, uh, town manager, and myself, uh, and Anna Witten, uh, met twice to review the requests and to prepare this recommended budget for you. The 
committee worked to try to maintain funding even in recognition of the fact that many, I, I would say all, um, except maybe two, were reduced in funding because of the decline in uh, CDBG funds. We had some new applicants, which is always encouraging to see. Uh, it's challenging, though, to take on new um, organizations to fund when we know the trend is declining funds. For that reason, uh, we chose, the committee chose uh, carefully with a lot of input from uh, department heads who are affiliated uh, with organizations that, particularly in the public services area. So um, I'd be happy to address any questions you might have about the recommended funding. Yes, Mr. Byrne. Um, so I don't have any questions, but thank you very much, um, Carol. And I'd like to just note that while, uh, in my opinion, the CDB subcommittee is a well-oiled machine that really <laughs> fires on all cylinders, um, it particularly this year, um, I think that we have the process down pat, but I think that it's safe to say this is never, um, they're never easy decisions. And, and one thing I learned this year is that every so often um, the town has to market that it's CDBG and kind of solicit advertisements, and this was one of those years. So, which I think is why we got, you know, uh, additional applications for funds. So, you know, that means that uh, the amount of people applying is going up and the funding is going down and there's obviously a mismatch. Um, I, I'm very happy um, with the recommendations put forth. I think they're, they're all incredibly fair and um, none of the decisions were made lightheartedly. They um, were all, um, you know, all discussed at great length. And um, I, I guess further than that, the only thing I would like to say is that um, you'll see a, an application from the Housing Authority, and F with that funding that's, um, that they're scheduled to receive under these um, recommendations, they'll leverage millions of dollars in state funding off that. So I'm very happy for that, and that's something I hope that we can continue to do, and I urge everyone else to continue to do. Thank you. Oh, and I move um, favorable action. Second. Okay, but first we have to vote CDBG in, correct? Um, we have to vote this. Right. I think that's his motion. That's yes. The motion. yes. No, this is the motion about the town meeting warrant article where we asked town meeting to support what we've approved. Oh, I, oh, oh, I didn't think about that, oh, Mr. Greeley. Oh, well, and on the CDBG, Adam votes with us. On the town meeting warrant article, he doesn't. Oh. Hmm. Are you all new here or something? <laughs> or, right? Well, so am I correct? We first have to support. We have to vote this. Here. This is the recommendation yes. from the subcommittee. Let's let's vote that first, and then we can we can move on. Although I understand that maybe we've done it in reverse, but okay. Yep. So make that motion first, Stephen, if you would. Uh, I move that this board um, supports our recommendations. Supports the CDBG recommendations yep. and seconded. Okay. Yeah. I just want so I wanted to comment about some of the specific choices that sure, we made. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, I think that Steve's pointing out the Drake Village, Life Skills Building Drake Village, I think was a major component for things we were think, talking about. Uh, this, the support of the Arlington <coughs> Housing Corporation is another big ticket item that appears. That's uh, most of what appears in line number one under affordable housing. I'll say some of the hardest ones we have are in the public services section. The public services section is very restricted in terms of the fraction that we can do, and so we literally spend every dollar that we can in public services, and then, you know, essentially we we would prioritize. I'm sure we would end up prioritizing the public services more if we had the leeway, but we don't, and so in that case, it becomes of that very fixed amount of money. How do we allocate it? And I think we only made uh, two or three changes, I'd say, of significance, which are a couple thousand dollars here and there. And we reduced um, a, a, a couple funds in, uh, like, related to, um, was it the life alert for the seniors? Mm -hmm. And we reduced a little bit in youth funding as well. But we did increase some of the hunger and food mm -hmm. programs that we saw uh, there. So those were, I wanted to comment on those in particular. And, uh, yeah. 
Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, just a quick follow up to Mr. Dunn's comment. Um, when we did look at the senior cuts, uh, the cuts that were unfortunately necessary, um, we did solicit the input from um, Susan Carp and uh, asked her to prioritize um, what um, what they could live with and you know what would be easiest to handle. So I think that um, that promotes the process. Yeah. Which is what Francis Dialeride did was stayed unchanged because of her prioritization request. Whereas the Life Alert program, which was I think two thousand or twelve hundred dollars, got cut. Yes, Mr. Killer. Thank you. Um, just a question. I know that in the past you've talked about how um, one of your one of the criteria when you're making these decisions is looking at programs, it, like your example, the the housing authority that's going to leverage other funds, mm -hmm. the CDBG, or or um, you know leverage volunteers or or whatnot. Do, do you do the converse analysis also? Where, like, I'm looking at some of these. I understand when a program, when a request is not funded. But my question is about requests that are funded below the request level. There's, there's presumably a tipping point with some of them where they won't actually be able to do the program that they're they're seeking seeking to, to do, and, and so then that funding might go <laughs> unused. It looks like the manager has something to say about yep. that. I think one important thing uh, in that regard to look at is m most public service requests request an amount they've never received and don't need to receive. So what one line that's not here but is in other versions of this document that we could show you are last year's budget yep. and then re uh, recommended budget. So for prior funded programs that gives you a better sense of yep. you know what that budgetary impact is. If you were getting at the uh, programs that had never been funded before uh, but are now funded this time, I think our approach was it's your first bite at the apple. Uh, we'll, we were interested in your application and your program. Here's a, a good faith offer of funding to see where you go from there. Great. Thank you. And what we have done before, I'm not sure whether any of these apply, is uh, people getting half of it this year and uh, applying again and in the second happens, half yeah. next year if it's something more specific. Yeah. That needs a specific amount of money. Well, life and skills building is that example. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Other comments? All right, so first a vote including the town manager on approval of the CDBG as recommended by the subcommittee and Carol. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So that's a 6 0, Marie. And now, uh, Mr. Burns' uh, motion uh, to recommend favorable action to town meeting, uh, which is we're just really informing them of what we've done on CDBG. And that was seconded by Mrs. Lamb. All those uh, comments? All those in favor? Oh, it's Mr. Dunn, I'm sorry. Mr. Dunn? Yep, yes. Okay, sorry. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thanks, Carol. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. What's left of it, huh? <clears throat> okay, back to item number eight. No, no, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Warren Article 14, excuse me. Yes. Disposition of real estate parcel 13 to 383 Cliff Avenue in Lexington. Mr. Chapter Lane, I believe. Right? Yes, so this was uh, an article that we filed at the request of local attorney uh, Eugene Lucarelli on behalf of a client of his who owns a property in Lexington adjacent to the property in question. Uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, there's a large swath of land that the town owns uh, in terms of, uh, and, and initially acquired for water rights leading up to the Great Meadows. This small triangle of land happens to be where the property owner adjacent has their driveway and a small shed. Uh, so they had uh, approached the town to see if we would consider disposing of that land, selling the land to them. After a great deal of research by town council and his office, it became apparent to both the town and to the resident in Lexington that it would not be advantageous to any to further pursue either disposition or acquisition of the land based on the way it was originally acquired. So based on that, our recommendation to the board is no action and the party who asked us to submit it is also withdrawing their interest. Move no action. Second. Further discussion? No. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Article 45, Resolution, Town Meeting Member Removal Process. Uh, submitted by Mr. Loretti. Leone. 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 God. Is he related to Mr. Judd? Yeah. <laughs> Doc. Mr. Chairman, if I may summarize, 
Um, this is basically just a resolution to gauge town meeting's interest in uh, establishing a removal process for town meeting members who fail to attend some requisite number of town meeting um, sessions. Um, I think it's been highlighted in a couple different places that this, in, at least in some folks, is a mind is a problem, and the town uh, moderator as well as the town meeting procedures committee request that the uh, selectmen move favorable action so that we can at least gauge town meeting support for submitting an article in the next cycle to establish a process. I believe they established some reference, they, they provided some reference materials, Framingham has a process for, uh, for exploring removal of, of candidates, and uh, it's really just there to provide the selectmen some context for um, this you know, vote to gauge town meeting's interest. Mr. Dunn. Uh, I move favorable action on the recommendation from the town moderator. I'm a, I love town meeting and I love the town meeting process and I think that uh, there is some power in incumbency and I think that if you're showing up to a quarter of the meetings then you do not deserve the power of incumbency and I think that you should be removed and if you can get yourself reelected then good for you but uh, I, I'm going to be happy to support this. I second the motion. Well, and I, I would just I would note that you know we do have you know, some of the committees and commissions on our books and our bylaws right now have provisions right now that if you miss more than three meetings, um, the, your removal can be requested. So actually some of the some of the formulations here in Mr. Leone's memo are much more generous than that. So. Okay. And then one of the things I'd look forward to at the town meeting discussion as well as from the town meeting bylaws procedures committee and the town moderator is um, and I understand the warrant, it's just the language that gets the um, item before town meeting, but what I didn't see in, in the submission by um, the moderator, as well as the attachment from, um, I think it's town of Framingham, and again, I think this will get flushed out on town meeting floor, is um, any sort of caveat for unique circumstances. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of a medical issue, you know, short-term medical issue, something like that. Um, but again, I've looked at town meeting's guidance, and if somebody doesn't bring it up there, then, then I will at that point. That, that was the only thing in there that if you said, Mrs. Mahan, you have your druthers, I'd kind of like to have some sort of, um, I don't want to say catastrophe pr pr provision, but it's better language than that, so. But we'll hear from town meeting, thank you. Um, so, I am I'm getting the feeling that I'm on the other side of this issue from my colleagues. Um, I also, um, you know, really, like town meeting, and I, and I do, you know, think it's wrong when people um, don't show up and skirt their duties. I agree with Ms. Mahan's um, comments that sometimes there are, you know, extenuating circumstances that should be taken into consideration should this move forward. Um, but that being said, um, these individuals are elected. Um, you know, it's not like they're appointed members um, like some of the other committees where in that case, I'm fine with, you know, if we, if you're an appointed member and you stop showing up, I'm, I'm happy to appoint someone else. Um, I'm not um, so inclined to tell the electorate that they, um, you know, shouldn't vote for whoever they want to vote for. And um, that even though you support this individual, um, uh, I'm okay with this, with town meeting telling you know, that individual who was elected that they can't serve. So I'm, a, I'm not gonna support this, and I'm, um, and I, I think it sounds like uh, uh, might be, this might be the lonely corner on this one, but that's okay, and um, I'm looking forward to further discussing this. I'm also going to oppose the favorable action because of the impracticality of it, to be honest. I mean, how do we enforce this? We have to have at least four meetings before we know a person missed one out of those four meetings, so they've missed 25%. I mean, I know these details haven't been worked out, but, uh, you know, I think uh, people have elected someone to town meeting. Their penalty should be they don't reelect them or uh, they're disqualified from running again if they don't attend a certain number of meetings. Uh, but I myself would travel for business frequently. I, I look through here and thank God I wasn't on the list that's published here. <laughs> but there's other years I could have been, certainly, uh, because of business travel. But now, especially with electronic voting, 
you have to, I believe, you have to be a town meeting member or we, the Board of Selectmen, cannot vote on warrant articles unless we are also elected town meeting members. So um, I, I, I applaud this, the, um, the sense of it, but I think it's very impractical to try to uh, implement it. So anyhow. Anybody else? Uh, I've completely convinced you, have I? I'm Mr. Dunn's <laughs> motion of recommending favorable action, seconded by Mr. Curo. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 That's a three. All those opposed, nay. Nay. That's the three, two. The intelligent one, no. Good. The controversy that we're like, let's, I don't know the last time we published a selectman's report. I was going to say, when I two. first got on the board, <laughs> 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 that wasn't a strange vote. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot as was 4 1, but as, so this is Charlie our first Jack 3 2. Heard, I did a one, how she okay, the other way. Exactly. <laughs> okay, final votes and comments Article 11, 12, and 19. Move approval. Move approval. Second. Second. Any discussion on any of them? Yes, I have, I have one. Yes, but I hate to come back to the to the to this horse um, okay. again, though. On this, the Article uh, 11 CPC, was it not the chair's intention, or did I mishear that that um, the screening of candidates would be the chair or his or her designee? Or designee? Yes. Yeah, I did not. I, I didn't see the phrase oh. or his or her designee. Mm -hmm. My apologies, so I'll correct that. Yeah. And Thank you. I, I, I just have one question. Uh, Adam, the revolving funds, the secondary view, were you, was it your intent that we would publish that in the Selectman's report, or was it your intent that you would provide that separately? So last year we put it as an appendix within the Selectman's report. So I, with the board's approval, I think we should do that again. I would think that's the right way yeah. to do it. I agree. Okay. So. Um, with the one amendment, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Back up. We want to look at Board of Selectmen's meetings for July and August. We didn't go that far, but um, could I ask people to look at May for a second? We, in May, we currently have meetings planned for the 4th and the 18th, because we have Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, would people by any chance be able to do the 11th and 18th instead of the 4th? Or is that, if it's an issue, I know it's two weeks in a row versus a week in between, but if it's an easy fix, I'd, I'd ask the board to do it. If not, I understand. Is that the 11th and the 18th? Yeah, it's fine with so it'd be the 11th and the 18th. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. So, Marie, will you uh, make that? Yep, please. Thank you. Uh, so then July and August, uh, do we want to give people time to see if they knew what they were doing for vacations. Uh, anybody have? We will be at one meeting a month at this point in time in July and August. Can I recommend the 13th or? Um, as far as I know, yeah. The 13th works for me. Okay. Yes? Mm -hmm. August is the one I'm Everything not sure okay about. So, uh, Marie, July 13th. And August. Who's, who, Joe, did you just say, who, uh, Diane, you said August? I think the third, I, won't, I know I won't be available. How about the 17th, right in the middle there? I'm fine with that. I don't know about anybody else's um, August. That's good for me. Joe? Uh, as far as I know, yes. I'll do my best to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you? No, I'm kidding. Oh, no. oh, all right. I thought you were. Okay. Yeah. So July 13th and August 17th. I'm a little bit, my, my plans for July are a bit in flux, and so I'm a little concerned, but. 13th is at this time clear. Yeah, but same thing we just did. I mean, I, we certainly can yep. revisit it, mm -hmm. you know. I and, agree. Uh, yep. um, so I believe we are done with the agenda. New business, Mrs. Kripelka. The only thing, I just left those two things on everybody's desk regarding the election. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's 
Marie was there Saturday night with uh, Diane and I reading out the votes, and I'd say she got what? 20 phone calls an hour, 25, 30. She informed the world of what the vote was going on there. Uh, Piper's dad, what do you got for us? I join everyone in congratulating Mr. Byrne and Mr. Curo, but no new business. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chapdelaine. No new business except for that same congratulations. Wow. Mr. Byrne. Um, I do have a couple things. Um, one, thank you for those congratulations, and thank you to everyone who uh, did make it to the polls on Saturday, um, even though um, you know Joe and I ran unopposed. Um, it's still humbling to see to you know have people go out and uh, check your name, and I'm certainly uh, honored to be on this board, and it's something I enjoy very much, and I really like working with um, you know the team up here and the team in the office and everyone else in town. So thank you for that. Um, Second, I know um, everyone's really been focusing on the March Madness uh, basketball tournament. And, um, and, you know, I think a lot of people here in Arlington were supporting Notre Dame, particularly for uh, Pat Connaughton, an Arlington native. And uh, I just want to say how impressed with him I've been. Um, you know, every time you turn around, he's talking about Arlington. And every, you know, news article, he, uh, he's mentioning Fidelity House. And, you know, you, you can really see... Um, I think his devotion to the town has really shown through, and he's truly been a great ambassador. So I'd just like to thank him for that and congratulate him on a, you know, a real job well done. And um, yeah, and it's it's really been a lot of fun to watch. Um, thirdly, um, I think that everyone, you know, when I a few weeks ago probably received an email asking for um, comments on Novus. Um, I would pre I think that that's something we should probably address in the near future. So um, I'm more than happy um, if Get with the chair's um, permission to take the lead on that still. And if not, uh, it's more done. Than you are. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So um, yeah, if everyone could send that to me individually, I'd um, be happy to compile it and um, talk to Adam and Adam Kurowski and we can get a kind of a little evaluation <coughs> going of where we are and where we want to go. So thank you. No further new business. Mr. M uh, Mrs. Mahan, excuse me. I'll, I'll be Mr. Dine. Um, just piggybacking on that, just for me, for me tonight, um, and it happened last week when I had the, I think it was Attorney Himes because my original one was working, I had to re-log on back four times as town hall guest. Did any of you had that problem? I had, just, to, I had to do it no. twice tonight. Okay. She had to do, I, and I'm, I don't know why. All of a sudden, and thankfully I got training by, um, Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Dunn on how to do that. Um, so just, I don't know if that's something, if it has to do with whatever the Wi-Fi server is. And then secondly, I just wanted to um, express my condolences and my colleagues to the family of Bill Dotson, um, who was the um, almost 91-year-old pedestrian struck and killed on Mass Ave in East Arlington. Um, he was an original member of the East Arlington Residents Association, um, also a standing member of the East Arlington Good Neighbor Committee. Um, he attended many, many um, events under both of those um, organizations. Very vocal, very active, fantastic gentleman, family man. Um, he was known for playing his harmonica and going up to the Fox Library, and he had a certain route where he'd go to Arlington Diner and, well, actually made a pharmacy first. And one of the things when I got the email from the town manager and I didn't see a name, which, because we have to take steps in, in terms of getting notified, but I saw the age and the location, I said a little prayer, please don't be Bill Dotson, because that was one of his top three. I think he stopped driving on his own when he turned 90. Um, that's just from my memory. But he still could have drove, in my opinion. But I remember him saying, when we were talking about issues surrounding East Arlington, whether it be Mugar, um, as well as when he was one of the people we spoke to about the compromise on the Mass Ave redesign, because he was saying, well, that's good if it's going to address that sometimes when you go across Mass Ave, it can be a very scary thing. So I, in, in spite of his age, he was very agile, very on point, um, a great you know, individual. He's going to be well missed, and condolences to the, all of the Dotson family. Thank you. Mr. Curo. Oh. Um, I just want to thank, also like, like, uh, like Mr. Byrne, I just want to thank the voters for uh, coming out and for um, um, returning the two of us uh, to office. I've enjoyed the last three years working with this board, and I, 
I look forward to the uh, the next three, and uh, let's make it three good ones. <laughs> That's almost done. Nothing. Well, well, uh, I was also going to mention Pat Connaughton, uh, and the thriller was both uh, to be at Mr. Burns' uh, victory celebration and be watching that game on television and how close it was. But a little known fact about Mr. Connaughton, Pat, and the husband, uh, I mean the father, Len, uh, he's a member of the Selectones. He actually twice came to a Selectones uh, concert and played the piano for us. He and my daughter went to school together. And I was thrilled to uh, watch him play basketball at Fidelity House. And you knew back then, mm -hmm. when he was in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at St. Agnes, this kid was gonna be something. Uh, and he certainly proved it. And uh, so, uh, and finally, I would like to thank again, you know, 2,697 people who did get out to vote. Thank you very, very much for that kind of uh, civic, uh, civic de uh, dedication. But, you know, a lot of people have said signs have never gotten anybody elected, and I believe that to be true. But when signs are out there, that's when people realize there is an election going on. Not a lawn sign other than candidates, and I, I don't, I, I, well, actually, uh, there were some out for Kevin Feely, I think, on election day. But very few, anyhow. So um, the rest of you get more involved. Well, thank you to those who did vote. Uh, that's it for me. Move Motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. We are adjourned. Next meeting of the Board of Selectmen, April 13th.